And welcome back to the PGL Major Offline Qualifier. It is day one of four as we head into the Swiss format, rounds of five. Round one today, of course, we're going to go through all eight matches, two in the books already as we move on to match number three. This one is a big one for both teams for both very different reasons. A former major uh, finalist, of course, in Team Liquid going head-to-head -head with the team who've never made a major yet. It seems incredible when I think about the fact that we've had ten majors already and Tyloo haven't featured in any of them, attempting to go for number 11 right now, though. We'll start, uh, however, back at our desk with uh, Natu and Moses with, with Liquid. Yeah. Um, uh, are, you, are you... How's your heart sure? rate? How, how's your heart rate right now? Yeah, are you as sure <laughs> that they are okay here? That, have they shown enough form recently to suggest they are one of the stronger teams, they should make it to the major? Yeah, the, I think they have. Uh, I, mean, it w I mean, that being said, it would be purely North American for them to drop the ball during the qualifier as well. And just, uh, just but I mean, this is a team Gotta that... keep on the traditions, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to me, in the, la in the last few events that Liquid have been at, they've, they've kind of established themselves, especially the most previous one with, with a close best of three against Astralis, uh, taking overpass against them, and then also taking out Fnatic. Um, they, they've kind of established themselves in the top ten. Um, but at the moment, that's nothing like too great to brag about, just because in that top ten, once you get past like the first like four or five teams, it's it's pretty much fluctuating very very quickly amongst all the teams. So uh, that being said, th this is a Tyloo team they should be able to put away pretty pretty handily, pretty easily. I think. I, I think they're on the right path if you look at it. Yeah. I, I was far more impressed with the ACS result than I was APL. Even they made the right. semifinals yeah. of APL. Uh, taking a map off of Astralis is you know it's not an easy feat, is it? And it's obviously the addition of Stanislaw has has brought a lot of structure into this team, and they're able, capable of making right decisions. We see them flounder here and there in like the Afropan situations, giving giving their op opposition a uh, possibility of getting back into rounds where they already have them at at advantage. And, but now they're facing Tyloo, that is not exactly known for having the greatest structure per se. But they they are the dangerous unknown though. That that's the one thing that's that they got going for themselves. Yeah. So I take a look. At their lineup right now. Uh, Nitro, Elige, uh, JDM, Stanislaw, and Twist now as well. Yeah, and uh, a new addition. Is that a better addition than Pimp, or is it just different for them? It's going to be different, and what it, one thing it provides is a little bit more firepower. Like this is a young talent, like just another another instance where this team has gone out and found a young talent and, and kind of said, "This not isn't the, probably the best short-term solution we have, but we're hoping that he builds into something that right. long-term can be very successful." Early returns are quite nice, um, but but I mean, while we mentioned it, we, I mean, Elige to me is the best player in North America. Uh, he's he's been phenomenal, and he's been showing pretty consistently that he can do great things against great opponents, uh, which is something we don't really see. But but for me, I mean, not to touch on it, the reason why this liquid team is looking so strong the reason why they have such a big advantage over Tyloo is they're they're one of the first North American teams to improve doing it the right way where where some of their fundamentals some of their structure seems much more grounded in proper counter-strike theory and they can build on that and they can just keep getting better and you can keep raising the ceiling um, you know it's not just some skill base where they have these stars who can just go off and carry you through through a map um, you know it is based on doing retakes properly of, of being slow paced being patient and really working things out as the, as the game goes on um, and that's promising JDM is even starting to get back into it, we should mention this is a point where Zeus, as, as the coach coming from formerly Luminosity, a you know, major winning coach, has been behind them, and we've seen massive leaps and bounds um, in, in ever since he took over in this team's improvement and how they play. And I think if this continues, the conversation needs to be had that Zeus could be you know, the best coach we have in Counter-Strike at the moment. Interesting. I like that. Yeah, we, we get Fair some enough. time, I'm sure, at some point yeah. over the next four days where we, uh, we have to do what we call Dr. Phil. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we, we can talk about Moses coaches. Moses fits the bill on that one. Yeah, yeah he does. Yeah. Back what, is it looking like Dr. Phil? <laughs> back to the hair, back to the ball jokes. <laughs> oh, Got the uh, first one see, out of the way early. Uh, see, I wasn't there. I wasn't on board with that one at all. That one came out from left field. Listen, they all um, like to <laughs> act like they stay away. They're too high for that kind of a humor, but they all crack eventually. Uh, okay. Uh, you the finest of Tenderloin. <laughs> in terms of where you... I mean, you've said Illusion's the best player in North America right yeah. now. And, and, and Twist is one of these guys they've you know, gone into the yonder and found and brought in as a new boy. Do they, do they need to, North American teams, do they need to spread their wings a bit more to find some of this new talent? Do they go to other games for them? Is, at least, wasn't he a StarCraft player originally, I think? Yep. Yeah, he was competing at the high levels. Yeah. I don't think he was like a StarCraft pro, but no, I think he was like I never grandmaster him, on the ladder. I think he was decent, yeah, decent um, level. And also, he even, he even stepped in for the Liquid Overwatch team when they needed a ringer, yeah. apparently <laughs> played pretty well. So, I mean, he, he's just one of those guys who's just naturally very... He's just a freak. It's yeah. fine. You, you can call you him a freak. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but, but you love it. And I mean, the big problem with the Liege that everyone's always had is like he's tough to work with as a teammate, like personality, you know, wants things done his way, you know, maybe a little bit egotistical, but... 
but I, I happen to like yeah. that ego on him because you can see yeah. it in his you, gameplay. You've got to need some of that, surely. No, you do. Yeah. Uh, you can tell, like, it, just the way the confidence he has in a lot of high-pressure situations, how he can handle, like, three individual op opponents attacking him yeah. from different angles. Let's say, for example, an overpass. He is in toilets. There's a lot of ways the opponents can be attacking him. He is actually getting sandwiched, basically. He still manhandles those, those opponents, mm -hmm. so it takes... A lot of balls to be able to uh, play in those situations, and and it's just I think it's only fair to be you know have a have a slight ego because that's going to help you in those situations. Yeah, and you for need his it. teammates, it's about tolerating. It's mm -hmm. always going to be in a game of Counter Strike, five individuals from different social backgrounds. You know, they they handle pressure differently. Uh, it's always going to be a, a matter of, of being able to tolerate that kind of stuff. Mm. And, um, and learning how to work within the team yeah. is the big thing. Mm. Okay, uh, I'm hearing that we have uh, Zeus, who is in the player area right now with Paula, so let's catch up with the coach. That is right, Zeus has descended from Mount Olympus to grant me an interview. How's it going, Wilton? Pretty good. How's it going with you, Paula? Very good. Pleasure to be back in Romania. Now, let's get into the thick of things. You're just coming off a pretty good result at ECS. You almost took out Astralis. Um, overall, a good tournament. How are you feeling coming into this one? I feel the same as you said. We feel, unfortunately, we didn't get out of group, but it was a good performance by us, and we've been showing that consistently we've been getting better, and we, we're going to be better at this event, and our goal is only one to make it out. I mean, there's so much that we could touch upon with regards to this matchup that you are about to have, so let's get into some of the finer details. You're going up firstly against Tai Lu. These, are, uh, these guys are a team who have been um, showing that they do have promise on an international stage, but um, as the guys on the desk mentioned, um, they haven't made it to a major yet. They're going to be feeling hungry here, and maybe overall they haven't gotten the results that maybe they could have. Um, how do you gauge these guys as opponents? I mean, it's always hard to play against a team that is from a region that you don't normally play against. And even looking at stats from them, it's so inflated throughout the matchups that they have in their scene. It's kind of hard to gauge where we're at. We do know that they are a hard team. They have a lot of skill. They aren't as polished as the rest of the team, but I think we have a pretty good game plan for this one. Okay, so you do have a set game plan for these guys. Yeah, it's to play our own game and beat them with our style, Not nothing against them. Okay, final thing that I'd like to ask um, to you, Zeus, is that... These guys have a brand, you know what I, mean. I have to ask it. These guys have a brand new coach from Brazil, Peacemaker. How is that going to factor in? You guys know each other well. Yeah, I mean, Lewis is one of my best friends. I love him, and I've talked to him personally here. I wish him all the best, and I'm sure he's going to have a lot of success to, with Tai Lu. I just hope it's just not going to be today. All right, fighting words from Zeus. Best of luck, Wilton, in this matchup. Paul, let's head back to you and the guys on the desk. Weapons. I like it. Fire. I like it. Bit of fight. Bit of feist. Good, good stuff. Uh, thank you very much, Zeus. Uh, of course, there is the coach of Team Liquid, former major champion himself, of course. So you've mentioned him as potentially the best coach in the world right now. Uh, yeah, well, I think I think the conversation can start to be had. Uh, you know, certainly, I don't think there's many coaches that we've seen this much improvement in a team from when when he became the coach to where to where they are now. Does that mean we underestimated him when he was winning everything with no, Luminosity but, and SK? No, but I think have a lot of intel and very pre yeah, previously. There's mm. a lot of question marks around the Luminosity team just because they have Fallen, who is considered the best yeah. in-game leader at the time. So it's always like, how do you filter out Fallen's yeah. you know contributions versus Zeus's? So I think that that maybe could, not you, could you not make the same argument here with Stanislaw though? Could you not say he's you know equally of a great caliber, great mind, good read of the game. I mean, you can't compare Santa's law to, to Fallen. I, I'm but not. I'm yeah, saying yeah. In, the, in the sense right, that right, yeah. who's doing the most work in this team? Who's building them up the most? I, I would still put more of it on Zeus just because even, even Santa's law when he became the coach of Optic, or I mean, not the coach, the in-game leader of Optic and he brought mm. them to success, still not like a tactical guy by any sure. sense, like still not someone who's going to be able to say, okay, this is your skill set. This is how we're going to use you. He's very new and he's, he's great in terms of his mid-round authority and all the Liquid players love him for that. Um, and you can see what Optic is looking like without that. Um, but I don't think he's a guy who's going to be coming up with the overall game plan okay. quite yet. A, uh, just yeah. quickly, I mean, it's just a, it's a matter of like understanding your own flaws as an in-game leader and then utilizing the coach to the right extent, like having that collaboration between the two that, you know, you give certain areas of expertise that may not be your forte yeah. to the coach. So as long as that works, you can be very, very fruitful. Yes, very true. Uh, let's move on to Tai Lu. Um, <laughs> You can't really talk about Tai Lu without talking about one man in particular. And it, I, I guess you made a great phrase earlier. I'm going to steal it a little bit from you, but it was your phrase. I'm going to give you the credit. He is a big fish in a small pond right now in China, and I'm talking about Ben Tet. No. He was fabulous at the moment. We had these questions that we everyone was telling us, you've got to watch him. He's unbelievable. He's so good. He's the best thing in Asia right now. He could be world class. He could go to a major. And we were like, mm, let's not get too carried away. And then you watch him at the minor, and you go, 
wow, okay, this kid, this kid's pretty good. He's pretty special. It's now, though, that he's got to deliver that, isn't it? Yeah, the best thing since sliced bread uh, coming out of China. <laughs> what do you know, right? Uh, no, not even Chinese, obviously, no. but in a Chinese team. Uh, he is an amazing individual. And, and like, yeah, I think that's the, the, the right statement to make. You know, he is a big fish in a small pond right now. Uh, looking at the numbers of the whole team, him individually, or, or just the, the map-winning percentages of Tai Lu, it's ridiculous. They're, they're boasting, um, I think the least they had was 71.4% yeah, on, on train and on, overpass. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're worse maps. You know, that's, that's kind of telling a little <laughs> bit of a story there. Uh, now, obviously, it's interesting to see Peacemaker coming in. He's not going to have a massive impact. I don't think there is a reason why they should be changing too many things either. Yeah. It's something that he actually touched on his interview with Agile TV as well, that you don't want to change too many things because you're just confusing everyone because they're used to playing in a certain manner. And then if you try to implement a system in, the, in the, their play too early, too fast, then I think they would just plummet. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, uh, piece by piece now for them, it's about kind of learning how they fare against the teams right now, individually speaking, and uh, from a team perspective. Right, we're going to get more from both of you in just a moment. I'm hearing we've got Peacemaker ready, who's with Parla. So why don't we hear from the man himself? Luis, first things first, what do you have to say to Wilton, who just fired some shots your way? I mean, if there is a thing that I know they're afraid of, is about my preparation. These guys know me since the past, and uh, well, if they fell for the for the for my trick about playing their own game and all that thing, they're in hell trouble. So we'll see how it goes. I like that. So you are feeling then slightly confident? Yeah, we are. I mean, we we just prepared pretty good. We had an idea about the map. We 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 thought it would be Inferno or Overpass, so we prepared a lot for it. And uh, the guys are feeling confident. And uh, if there is anything like this team is really skilled, as much skilled as Liquid is. So if we hit our shots and play our, our, our game and, and do the things that we prepare for, and yeah, I think we, we have a huge chance of upsetting here. So Luis, how did this opportunity come around for you? Because this is, of course, um, you are a relatively new addition to this team. And uh, a lot of people are interested on exactly how it happened. Well. Pretty much, uh, I heard that Tyler wanted an international coach, and uh, I was on Misfits, and uh, things didn't work out there. So I contacted Marshall. I have a good relation with him. He's the CSGO manager. And as soon as I heard uh, they, they were looking for, for the coach, and uh, as soon as I heard that they were playing the major qualifier in ESL Cologne, I immediately thought it was a great chance for me to improve as a coach and to experience a new scene, the Chinese scene, the Asian scene. So, so far, it's been really great, and uh, I'm proud to be part of Tyler right now. Personally for you then, what does it mean? Because of course recently um, there were some uh, words going around the community that maybe you're not the coach that you have once been out made out to be. Of course you have a storied record, but recently some murmurings in the crowds. Yeah, I mean, it's been a, definitely it's been a struggle for me in the, in the past teams because I didn't really have time to put down work and, and to implement my style. And uh, I think that I learned from my mistakes in the past. And uh, I mean, it's very special for me to be coaching Tyler because the amount of respect that these guys show for me and just in these two days working with them, I could see how much they trust me, how much they trust the preparation and how much they want to improve. They're willing to do whatever needed to, to improve as a team. And I mean, they, they have the keys to succeed and hopefully with me now helping them, we'll, we'll be able to achieve a great success, yeah. Final thing then, Luis, what should we look out for in this team other than, of course, Bentet? I mean, as I said, the whole team is very skilled. Bentet is, is really good, but I mean, we also have HZ. That guy is really skilled. I mean, the whole team is very skilled. Captain Mo is a good opera as well. And I think a good factor that we have is the fact that we have a, we can double up pretty much. Like somebody also likes to op, and uh, the the double up factor is key for us as well. Especially going into this match against Liquid, uh, I think we, we we have some tricks about about it. And uh, I think, yeah, overall, I think we're a very skilled team. As I said, I think we are as better as Liquid is in terms of skills. So yeah, I think I think we we can upset a lot of teams here. All right, there we go. Luis, thank you so much. Please go ahead and join your team. Paul, his name is Peacemaker, but I think this is going to be a war. Very nice, Paolo. Yes, we're looking forward to it as well. A bit of old blood spilt there. Nothing wrong with that between two old rivals, is there? Uh, Peacemaker, of course. The, I should point out, not the coach technically here because uh, he couldn't be because he's a bit of a misfit, so he couldn't actually be the coach uh, nice. right now. Good one, sir. That yeah. was good. Was that good? That was good. A remote uh, Creamy Moses approval. Listen, Ch -ching. let's, uh, let's a lot, the lot, A lot's been said. A lot's been said <laughs> about him, right? Okay. Yeah. But actually, just as an outsider coming back in, you look at it and you go, "This makes an awful lot of sense for Tyler." We've been saying for months, it seems, Natu, since we've spoken January about it. 
if only the Chinese or the Asian teams could get a European coach or a North American coach, bring him in, bring new ideas, bring them some structure, it would help them. They, they have one already. Uh, Project KR has, has Rambo. Yep. And actually, when we saw them in, in, in Kiev, like the team is, is missing some skill <laughs> to execute everything. But the theory Project behind KR. the plays there... Pre yeah. What? <laughs> no, no, no. Just, just thinking back to the old days. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. He was but, <laughs> so, so the skill is obviously missing to execute some of the ideas. But like yes. the theory behind the plays they're making, the theory behind the Counter Strike was was very, very sound. Uh, and they, I think they impressed kind of all, all of us analysts at least at that event mm. with 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 how they were playing. So surely then Peacemaker is a good choice. I, for I, this. I actually made, I made a video on that. I think this is a great fit um, personally, just just for Peacemaker to come in because one of the two things these guys are missing, and yeah, he mentioned there's a lot of skill in this team, and there is. Um, but the things I've always missed is like discipline and like not mm. making mistakes or you know the timing of when you make your plays and and having that, that that kind of discipline to hold yourself in check until the right moment and that's something peacemaker who has a reputation as being a little bit more of like a dictator style coach where he wants to he wants to have everything he wants everything done his way I think this is going to fit very well into this style especially because in order to improve this team as a coach you have to break all the bad habits before you can reteach them good habits mm. so I mean that's something that he's going to be obviously being critical and, and having all the preparation is going to be what he what he aims for all right let's get into the map veto uh in terms of the maps quite interesting really when you look at these um the only one you could really say is probably nuke that tyler just won't want to play uh yeah so Fair there you enough. go so they've gotten rid of nuke uh, and it's ended up on it um that's not necessarily a bad thing i guess for liquid although they don't have the best win rate on it's 38 percent right now but it but it is oddly tyler's best map Listen, just in terms of win rates right now. Yeah, I mean, well, Liquid's going to be fine with whatever map is, is going to be played in this in this series. Um, obviously, because it's tough to, to really establish which, ma which maps are the best for Tyloo because they're always competing within the yeah. Asian region. Now, they did lose a series to boot from Singapore just uh, in, the, in the Malmo qualifiers, which is not boating well for Tyloo. But um, regardless, I think the interesting thing, and this is kind of funny with, with Zeus being the coach of this team, is um, we've, we've seen Tyloo have some good Inferno games when they beat uh, Luminosity yeah. and DreamHack Malmo last year on this very map. So... Um, that, that's going to be a little bit interesting. Yeah, different yeah. version, but um, yeah. I don't think there's a whole lot they're going to take away from that, obviously. But it's just, just uh, I thought it was fun. interesting yeah, parallel. For, no, for no, me, no, fun like fact for everyone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good to know kind of a thing, yeah, right? You learn something just, new Just in case day. it comes yeah, up when you're at the pub live. and the quiz happens to be on and you think you get one of those I'm, random questions. Honestly, I, I think as, as far as uh, Liquid is concerned, as, as long as you steer away from the Mirages and the Caches, yeah. the kind of map. I mean, that's the dangerous one, wasn't it? Mirage. Yeah. Yeah, that's the the Chinese map, right? So yeah. as long as you steer away from those kind of maps in the best of one scenario, I think you're you're in a in a pretty good situation because I feel like I agree with Moses here that they they just have the structure, uh, and they in a map like Inferno as well. I mean, as much space as you have now on the T side, if you know how to play the map properly, make yourself room to be able to execute up towards the bomb side, you're in a good situation. But then again, you have that unknown factor, and when it comes to Tyloo, we've seen them do some crazy shenanigans on different maps, yeah. kind of you know kind of overwhelming your opposition by playing in a very different manner to how other teams play. For example, we saw last year in Mirage, they would send two on catwalk mm. pretty much every single round on the CT side, and, and people were having issues taking over middle. Um, Nobby, I think it was at the time. So, right. I mean, pfft, there's, there's, uh, that's an interesting dynamic, but still, I, I, I'm the one that's going to vote for structure being the thing that's going to take it for Liquid, though. Okay, so you're going with Liquid? Yeah. Very quickly, Jason, which way? Oh, I'm definitely going with Liquid, yeah. What a surprise. I'm so shocked. Like, yeah. it's unbelievable. Listen, someone, the Optic someone... one was a bit of a, a toss-up there against Penta. <laughs> this one, though, this one's dead if on, Liquid drops it? the ball here, I, I think I might just end the day. I might just go home. All right. Head back well, to the hotel. You heard it here. Uh, there it is, then. So no pressure, but if Liquid don't win this, Moses is basically firing himself, and yeah. he's off home. Uh, let's head into our third match of the day as we head back to your commentary team for game number three. Thank you very much, Paul. I am, uh, I'm hoping that Tidy wins so we don't have to suffer Jason's presence for the rest of the day, James. <laughs> well, there we go. Yeah. Not, not much to, to add to that, Dan. <laughs> um, I, th I think it's interesting, w just to add to Tidy while we have a few seconds, um, it's cool that they get an international presence because yes. when we uh, commentated the Asian minor e uh, for the E-League major, what we noticed is that there's a lot of uh, regional counter-strike being played where they're playing each other rather than playing the game. So yeah. I think there's a lot of stuff that won't translate uh, into international counter-strike. So to get some eyes from outside the region, I think is, uh, is very important for them. Um, yeah, That's we'll see right. how the language barrier works out. But I, I feel like the Asian teams will be uh, you know, more disciplined than a North American team. So, I mean, I'm just assuming, you know, Peacemaker style, we probably have an easier time with things in that region. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think Fallen proved that it all, 
it, it doesn't come down to the region you're from necessarily. As long as there's enough activity and there's enough like good players, it does come down to the understanding of the game. Because that's something that Esk or rather Kaboom TD could do back in the days. You know, the games Academy lads led by Fallen. Like it was, they they played the game right. They understood the game, and that that is that is a good point. So hopefully, um, as you say, we will see uh, we'll see that with Tai Lu here, just a better understanding, a better approach. But it's going to be tough against Liquid. It's going to be very tough. We're back on Inferno, as you guys can see. The lovely Inferno. It's uh, in its uh, new, well, the new, the new edition. They look, we have, oh, we have Prius there for about a second and 1.5 seconds on screen. Oh, I missed it, man. I missed it. You missed it? I missed it. The Hollywood, production. Hollywood Prius shot. I missed it. We're in the game. T side for Tai Lu and a, oh, a very aggressive mid push on Liquid. Yeah, and we'll see how. I mean, Liquid, Liquid, I think all they can do is play play their own game and see how it works out for them. For now, it's T's getting the kills in the pistol round. The Tech 9 spam not going to work out, and all of a sudden, advantages turn around. Tyler not really uh, pushing with their last two players just yet, and Liquid will reposition. Stanislaw making his way towards the library area. And they'll just wait to see what Tyler have to offer with their last two players. DD, the king of anti-eco frags. See if he can keep up his uh, his good behavior on Inferno later on. But for now, it might be Tyloo on a force by an eco if they can't make this work with a man disadvantage. Yeah, and I look forward to seeing when the AWP gets into the hands of Mo. He's pretty good with it. Well, we'll see if he can be good with the USP here. There's a quick engagement spotted by a leash. Leash doesn't get any tagging done onto, uh, onto Mo, however. He's there to try to trade, but a smoke goes down. And that sort of prevents the trade attempt. That actually might make Didi's life slightly more difficult here as he now gets onto the bomb site and he can try to plant. But the, the problem is, is that CT could just rush him, so he's going to be very careful. He's going to fake it initially and rush to the smoke himself, going what? absolutely mental there. The spin, the spin there from Didi somehow finds himself the kill. Down to one, a one versus one now as we get a re smoke and a plant. Now forced in that smoke by DD as Sansor finds his way around the smoke and it will all be over. But at least he got a bomb plant as an additional kill or two. Yeah, it's a job well done, all things considered. Um, I think his mouse, there's sometimes like if you have a piece of dust on your mouse or something, all of a sudden you just start staring at the floor and his mouse just went straight rock bottom, but he still managed to get the kill. So, you know, a tough task. But uh, worst case scenario is takes off for Tyler, which means there are AKs if they want them in the following round. They haven't bought anything just yet. Five Glocks. So I am curious to see if anything will be invested. Seems it's going to be... Okay, here we go. Some pistols will come out, but they'll be waiting for the AKs for the most part. No flashes or anything, just the odd pistol here and there. So they'll try to do some damage. See Liquid's approach. Yeah, I think Liquid's idea will be not to do anything crazy. Don't take, don't overextend. Just play your own game, and that should be enough to take you over the line. I mean, just due to ex experience at uh, at top tier, top tier Counter Strike. And again, I think I think like Tyloo or a Chinese team's biggest issue is the le it's just the uh, the level of experience in international Counter-Strike. The more they can absorb that, the better. I'm sure they'll be spending some time in Europe in the uh, in the coming weeks. They'll try to make as much of that as they can. Two kills, considering their investment, not bad, not bad. Yeah, Mo can still do more too with the Deagle in this position. All it takes is one well-placed bullet for a frag, of course, so they need to be wary. They do have the bomb under control and the CT presence is in middle now as well. So. It should be very difficult for Mo to get anything extra here. I think they sh it would be that they would make a mistake or that he makes a spectacular shot. But I'm really hoping from Liquid that we'll see a very strong fundamental, like the emphasis be on strong fundamentals as opposed to anything else, as opposed to trying to bully Tai Lu with skill, as opposed to trying to, you know, just force certain risky plays onto Tai Lu. Just let, allow them to make the mistakes. I have to just say something. Like there are 17 seconds left. He's only got a Deagle. And he has a reasonable chance of not dying before the time runs out. The bomb is over towards top mid, so I don't know why he's going towards B in this situation. At this point, the CTs don't even need to face him. So he's probably going to, to die via timeout. Oh, dear. 
Oh so, no, it's I, all gone very wrong. Yeah, so again, the, the lack of the lack of experience, that's round number two. I didn't know he's got two thousand one hundred dollars. Yeah. I was thinking to myself, like I mean happen. maybe he was expecting a flank, but he's spending way too much time in CT spawn looking for players towards B when he's the last man for his team and the bomb is next to boiler. Yeah. You can't want your teammates to like like just shout at you at that point. It's like Dude, that's go, the problem. Go, go die. Yeah, but that's that, that's the issue. Um, you know, coaches can't talk during the game. He can't. A peacemaker can't coach them anyway. And his team, again, it's like it's too much Chinese Counter Strike, not enough international Counter Strike, which allows errors like that to happen. Yeah, that is a big problem. Wow, what a what an oversight. Either way, we'll see if uh, Mo can get any damage done with the eagle. And uh, talking about you know the approach of Liquid, you know this round they're going for a lot of aggro towards Banana here and. This is this could actually be quite good because Tyloo, they're not even interested in contesting it. They're just going to go straight into A before the rotation from Liquid can actually happen. So they've actually got a good counterplay here. They just have to be very fast on the entries, and they're doing that. Using the numbers, trading effectively, they're in on top of the bomb site, and the plant is going to happen right now. Damn, Mo don't need no rifle. One D onto a liege, and they are winning some angels and then some on this A bomb site. So they make it work despite the bumpy start in that last round. JDM just holding an angle. He's obviously got no intention of pushing, but uh, sometimes this can help you save. Just holding a strong angle to get one kill and starting to back off gives you more breathing room while that bomb continues to tick. And as you can see, he's going to play with the def cam and uh, give himself some more breathing room. And indeed, the flank is coming in, so that's going to work out. And, and this is this is like goes back to my point a little bit. Um, I, I, this is just my preferred approach, right? When I, whenever I was playing tournaments in the past and and so on, it's just whenever I'm up against someone I don't know about, then it means that they're probably not on the top level, you know, in that situation or you know or whatever. Like there's no experience against them, generally speaking, so you don't know what to expect. So you just play like very fundamentally, because there Tyloo basically did a strategy which is like a perfect counterplay to three pl uh, three aggressive on B at the start of the round, which is which is not a, necessarily a, a safe play. Um, if, if, of course, if that happens, if, if let's say Tyler, you understand, maybe they've done their research, maybe they understand that Liquid like to open like that on Inferno, um, and that's how they do their CT side very often, or maybe they just want to play a super gambly style against the better team and get lucky, and that's what that's what just uh, you know happened potentially there. They managed to get a very good round against what Liquid opened with. So Liquid, let's see uh, how they they adjust now, how they feel out, how Tyler want to play their team side, because right now um, they don't know yet. There's not enough rounds that have passed for them to understand the style of Tyler today. Somebody's AK is called Is Your Nightmare, which is kind of cool because then it's like somebody is your nightmare. <laughs> but, who, but who is it? <laughs> Stanislaw towards Arch. Double short play. Nobody, okay, they, they are watching Balcony from the short position. So quick support can be had around the boiler area, should it be required. Jumping around towards short, maybe taking him by surprise, but not quite. Twist of a 2K after he will get traded. Stanislaw's there towards Arch, but doesn't have the range with the UMP. Awkward positioning for JDM. Especially because they're exposed to that top mid area. Now they get smoked out of the position and the rolls are almost reversed. The bomb's in the smoke, however. JDM trying to play close, not working out for him. And there goes the bomb. Really interesting approach on this round so far from Tai Lu. Uh, just diving out of balcony, pretty much everybody without the uh, the smokes on the site. And now we have just UMP retake. That is not the best situation in the world, but they do have some good running accuracy on that gun and the ranges are going to work pretty well for the UMP. So we'll see if Liquid can do this. They certainly have the tools, but no flashbangs. And no I don't see kit. a kit either. Yeah, that's, that's a really big problem. And now the aim battles are coming into play. He picks up the AK, can't win the last battle against Mo, and that's going to be the round for Tai Lu. So... I guess they didn't have the tools. I, d I don't know who it was. I saw We saw this round not so long ago um, at ECS finals, but the difference was that the, the, the attacking T side, they put a wall of smokes on the bomb site so that when they come out of the balcony, all they have to worry about is like the pit player potentially, um, which was like quite a cool idea. But there was like without the smokes and they made it work. Two to two liquid on pistols with, the, with two HG grenades. On Twist and Elise to the Banana players, and DD is moving forward straight into the grenades, as is HZ. Damage done, but uh, that's a full rotation from Liquid, so they've got to show presence by way of high explosive grenades towards B, then rotate the entire team towards A. What do Tyloo make of this? A smoke top mid, top the top banana actually, and so now there's no action anywhere. Do they expect a stack? Let's see if the bait works for Liquid. Tyloo's still creeping. 
like DDK in the club towards the B-Bomb side. Gotta find a new one, man. You've been using that for years now. I know, I just wanted to needle you a little bit. <laughs> okay, tweet me, where where should DDK be creeping? We've we've done the club, so we're also gonna be creeping in the library. Creeping behind the librarians, I don't know. Wow. I'm clutching, I'm clutching <laughs> where, a straws. Where, where is this going? Clutching a straws. Where is this going? We've got um, Tylee slowly discovering that the B site is for free. And uh, this is, uh, again, this is, I think I mentioned this in one of the last casts. It's really nice, like, when you're in this round, when you know that the CTs will be saving fully, just get one of the, your, your teammates on a, on a MAC-10 here. It's, uh, they could have done that, and it, it definitely provides a lot of additional safety. And, you know, just having that one expendable player that can just go fast around the corners. You know, if you're not prepared to monitor everything, um, it's, it's really nice. They'll, they will get it done, though, with AKs. They'll find the uh, free bomb site. They won't lose anybody just yet, though. Just the initial damage from uh, HEs on Banana. And Tyloo will be happy here. I mean, this is great, too, because Liquid don't have anything. They actually full, full, full saves. There's only a PT-50, and that's basically it. So it's not even a massive loss to not get the frags here. And the risk is pretty high. If you, if you run into the stack and you, like, tr you tr if you try to hunt the frags, that would be a pretty big mistake because you're giving up so much investment for like a, what, a stock pistol. That's, that's not good economy, yeah. economy management. Tyloo, on average, carrying 5k each right now. So it's 5k versus, well, $300 on the PC50 for a $300 bonus. Not really worth it at this point in the game. Liquid, they, they're back on the buy. It's not going to be the best. Four to four and a half K will yield M4A4s and uh, grenades here and there. Elige D1 player with the silenced M4. So it seems that silenced M4s tend to be in the minority at the moment. Tyloo with a thin lead. Mo deploying some grenades towards the banana area. Some Molotovs going into the uh, through the balcony. Stop any fast boiler plays. Now, put some Molotovs down. I'm sure Nitro was spotted there, but Tyloo have to make sure they're not baited by uh, team flashes. It's a solo flash from Nitro and a kill from Elige. Very difficult stuff around the smoke, but maybe they'll have to settle for the one on one. They want to push through the smoke onto the site, and who knows what's behind it. Oh dear. Entries coming quite easily here for Tai Lu. They still have a player lurking towards second mid, interestingly. Uh, is now starting to, f well, actually still walking around second mid, so they could use the reinforcements. They have over a minute, so they could even go back towards top mid if they wanted. What's, they have in what's important also in situations like this is keeping an eye, like you've killed two people towards B, but have you killed the B players or is there another person potentially lurking? That's something that they need to be aware of as well. Yeah, and, and at this point, as long as they just, the, the kind of uh, foolproof, uh, play here is to just go as a team and use your grenades well. Um, and that that's, that should allow Tyloo to have enough advantages to win over a bomb site, get a bomb down and and win the round. So we'll see if that's what happens here. or Because Liquid, they're forced into this spot where either they take a massive gamble on stacker site or they just allow people to be isolated and play rotations or, ga or basically play on at least getting two, a 2k there, which is pretty crazy. Really nice stuff there from Elish. Now JDM and uh, Twist have something to work off of as they come in from, uh, from CT spawn, and JDM will now know that construction's safe. So they have a way into the sites. That is a huge 2k from Elish, especially with the silence them 4 Massive stuff on that second kill. That gives them a fighting chance. That's the last grenade gone for Liquid. No Molotovs or anything to flush out these players. The crossfire is here. The occasional pick from JDM is ready for it. 2K from JDM, rarely see him use the M4A4, but uh, he beasts it that time. Can get the extra money from the defuse to help buy sniper rifles in the future. AK collected by Twist. Liquid looking good. Yeah, that was a pretty deep peek as well from the player on, uh, on the new box position. So I H said. From H said, yeah. So I, 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 do, I guess like he just didn't understand that a player could be close at that point. So we'll start to see now now that things are equalized and uh, Liquid get around together, that they'll be in a position to start applying some more pressure. They may do so uh, through the use of utility and try to play three on Banana again. We'll have to see. Looks like they're going for a more standard approach. So I, I like that. It's good to, you know, just see what, again, Tyloo are really wanting to do here. Good pre nades again. They're actually consistently getting some good damage from, from these nades on Banana. Somebody in second mid. I'm going to keep my, uh, my computer on him as he hasn't got any kills at the moment, but that might be because he's supporting his team 
for the most part. And right now, he is indeed just making sure there's no flank around A apartments while his team put in work towards Banana. So that's his job for the time being. He'll be smoking off Arch. You see the grenade sailing past Didi's uh, perspective. And now Tyler will have a renewed focus towards mid, which is instantly smoked by the CT. Somebody's made his way into apartments. I don't know if Tyler made it all the way up Banana uh, with the uh, four-man presence there. One minute on the clock. Somebody slowly creeping into apartments as his team emerge top mid. And it looks like they're going to go for this A play. There's two on Arch side though at the moment for Liquid. So you can see the entry is really easy up quad. And they're going to be happy about that. Twisto, nice off angle coming into play with the double. The trade has not happened. And he's just sitting there and his teammates are now repositioned to play off of him. A third from Twist, almost the fourth. It will come quite easily from Stanislaw, who, who again had all the time in the world to position him for that. And there you go. DD will get one kill in consolation, but the bomb is lost. He doesn't have enough time to get there and, and really do anything with this round. So it's over in this one. Twist was allowed to do too much work. Yeah, these multi-frags are, are proving very important for Liquid. Elige towards the B bomb site, Twist towards the A bomb site. Twist one of the uh, up and coming, if that's appropriate. Players, at least names. It's more a name than play, you know, earning your stripes and such. Maybe he'll make history at this major. Remains to be seen as we move through the qualifier. Liquid now taking the lead versus Tai Lu. And uh, the money's awkward for Tai Lu in this round. DD with $350 because he saved his weapon. Some money will be spent on pistols, but I think it's going to be down to DD to try and open things up. And unfortunately for him, he has the worst spawn of his team. If he had the best spawn, then he could throw a a flash off the wall, find a car position on Banana and try and get a fast peek on a blind CT, but no. To add insult to injury, he has the worst spawn and he will be deploying a smoke towards top mid to stop any early aggression. It can be common for CT side to push through mid on an eco round, but maybe unlikely when they know there's an AK in play. Yeah, no, I, I do feel like Liquid have certainly, certainly adjusted their play to try to allow Tali to, to kind of execute some of their game plan, but then to try to capitalize upon any of the mistakes. Um, which have been happening, so allow your opponent to hang themselves with uh, with how they're playing it. So we'll see whether that approach continues, or whether Liquid will start to feel more confident and start to, uh, start to play their own game as well. On top of that, in aggression, but it comes to play with the tech noise, the AK, and so on. And we have a great setup, good crossfires coming in from Liquid. They're executing the frags very well. Once again, a double front twist from that uh, balcony pit position. The rap finally does come though, and oh, Stanislaw with a quick double, and now that just leaves. Ben Tet alone in the pit position. So again, Liquid just taking this very calmly, very passively, and able to frag their way out of a lot of these situations with just decent setups. Well, for the most part, Tyloo are on $4,000 because of the timeout victory of Liquid. DD is left on two and a half thousand dollars. So uh, I had a tweet about that second round um, where they were on eco and lost by timeout, saying they think it's more common sense and inexperienced. But I think it, I think it's. Uh, well, I'll come back to it on a later round. It's not an eco round, but we're still getting the push from Liquid again, trying to abuse their dominant position. Once that Molly's gone on Banana, then those CTs can actually throw a pop flash for JDM to continue to push with that MP9, and Stanislaw has some nice cover for him in second mid. Now, Smoke's down the, bot, that down the middle of mid. Uh, mid seems to be narrower, so that can cause problems for the T's as well, but we won't have such a thing in this situation. Two-man uh, push will actually work out, and I mean, if Nitro got picked off there, then who knows what would have happened, but they put trust in their teammate and it paid off for them. So four on four situation, things are getting kind of weird though. Yeah, this is really disruptive. Again, this really tests the team's ability to call when when you have a lot of pressure on, you lose a man very early on into the round when you had a game plan. So now you have to basically be like, okay, we don't have what we wanted to execute this plan with, so we have to make a new plan on the fly. They've decided to go down Arch with three players. Twist in a good position now that he's dropped out of the pit. And this is a, a very annoying headshot angle to deal with. You have to you have to go and try and find a way to deal with it. Okay, that's, that's a good approach. Just shot straight in the face with the AK-7. Let's see if somebody can do the same. Yes, he can. Stanislaw will fall on the bomb site, allowing a 2v2 after plant situation. Alicia's close, though, and he spotted one player's position in the pit. 
Nitro making his way through apartments in the meantime, so at least can run distraction and allow Nitro to try and get a pick, and indeed he will do exactly that. Mo exposed to Balcony while trying to duel towards Arch, and out somebody in a crossfire. Now he's down to one versus one. He's got less than 20 HP though, versus uh, a Liege with a lot more, but he needs a headshot, can't quite get it. It'll be a Liege, and that's going to put Tyloo back into eco territory, or actually the bomb plant might allow them another buy. A fourth round in a row for Team Liquid. Yeah, Tyloo around 4k again, so perhaps they will go for a buy, especially with only one player surviving for Liquid. There's an opportunity to break them. And uh, quickly, going back to that second round, yes, it's, it's common sense to uh, not lose by timeout when you've only got a deagle on the second round, but I feel like it could, it could, the fact he's there for so long could also be influenced by like local Counter-Strike where people might do things that you wouldn't normally f you find. It's kind of too long to talk about in the middle of, uh, middle of a round, but indeed they do go for the buy Tyloo. Back on the AKs, grenades here and there, but they have an opportunity to break Liquid. A double up, Nitro and JDM, perhaps inspired by G2 and how the G2 are unrelenting in, in double, so it doesn't matter what's going on, they are going to do it if they can on the CT of Inferno. And a crossfire, typical crossfire setup you'd expect on this map. Oh, wow, I think GDM moved there before shooting, and that, that should have been a kill here. So there, this is definitely something surprising that Tyloo Pats shouldn't have as far as advantages go, but they do. They got the extra kill, and now they're in on top of that A-bomb site. Once again, though, Twist is just causing so many problems. Time and time again, Twist is getting the kills from the balcony and stopping the pushes. This is another one of those rounds as he gets himself a 2k and Liquid defend despite being in a situation where they went one for two um, in, uh, in that spot there as the players push up mid. Just not good. Not good. Or rather, you know, two for one, that is, as from the CT perspective. Um, so that should have been a, a better approach. It probably should have ended up in a bomb plant there for Tai Lu. So they'll be quite sad that that's not the case. Twist, though, ever reliable around the balcony in the pits. Tyloo have called for a tactical pause. So as I understand it, uh, Peacemaker can't talk to them during matches because of his involvement with Misfits at Miners. So they can talk amongst, them, talk amongst themselves and uh, try to figure out where the hole in the defense is. Okay, so he's just watching and... He can outside, he's not, outside he's of the game. He yeah, I don't think he's standing behind them. I think he is oh. uh, elsewhere. Okay, so just watching the games. And yeah, so between games, I suppose he will converse with the team. It's. I think it's, his job is especially difficult at this event because in the Swiss system, it's like you can't really prepare for like a best of one versus X, you know. It's not like a series or something. So a lot of teams to prepare against in a short, a short space of time, only so much you can really expect to do. I think probably focusing on minimizing errors and approaches to the game and not uh, dying by timeout on the fourth by round. And, as, and a lot of the, uh, well rather, the issues that they might have might be quite habituated. But we'll see if they can do something here. They've already got an opening towards Banana Nitro. Force back. Does he have enough time to get out of there? He does. Somebody is in hot pursuit. They're hot in his heels as JDM is now looking on with the AWP. But Nitro has gone down on the bomb site, which means that it is available to them for a plant. However, the bomb is down in Banana, which is a really huge issue. They do have a flank coming in as well. So this could get interesting as there's 50 seconds to go. And Team Liquid are committing hard into this uh, retake, although the bomb has not been spotted just yet. Yeah, Ben Tet's the man. He's got to kill JDM. He has to kill him. Because if he dies in that situation, they can't get off the site. Um, but they make it work. With last man standing, as is Didi, who manages to escape the site quietly. But he chooses to stand and fight. He does. Instead of, I mean, you've got two schools of thought there, right? One is to go and get the bomb and run towards A. The other is, you know where the guy is right now. So take the jewel while you know where he is versus rotating and having no idea where he is. Works out for Tyloo, fourth round on the board, and that has instantly put Liquid in a difficult spot where they can only afford pistols for the most part. Yeah, and you can see Twist was surprised to be in this duel, I think, against DD. So, a much needed lifeline, additional lifeline there for Tyloo, as now we've got Liquid in a very hard situation. Double, well, triple CZ, double UMP. It does a lot of grenades though, so we could see some cute plays from them using these nades and their 
close to medium range weapons. Ooh, that's a good nade onto Nitro. I wonder if they would have heard any collisions there. I think it may have just knocked him. Resmoke it. You know this player's very close, but just pushing the smoke there. And that did not work out all too well. I think there was a flashbang with it, but still, the flashbang did not do its job in that case, unfortunately for him. Now HZ is lost. It's like Tai Lu are going to start to think twice about Banana, and they are heading back out towards more passive positions into middle. There's a double arch play from Liquid. We've seen a lot, a lot of uh, two-man short today, but not so much two-man long. And that's two-man on road as the rotation towards short or site comes in from the uh, CTs. But they don't really have much, if any, information at present. So they're just gambling. Somebody is running some distraction towards the A site, keeping them entertained. But it's a fake. It's a trap. He's selling them lies. There's the push. Five man push towards B. Five versus two. No counter grenades from the CT side. A legion with a sneaky spot. No kill for him though. Nice headshot from Mo. And there goes Nitro. And that should be the conclusion of the round. Tanis Lord's rotating closer to UMP. Four versus two. Not much to lose really for the CT side. So we'll see what they opt to do. Maybe try and find some exit somewhere. But other than that, nothing doing for Team Liquid. The buy has failed. They'll get 1,900 for this round, and they will be on the eco. Well, it's getting interesting now that uh, Tyler is starting to get some money together. Um, as long as they can keep four players alive in this round, that could change, though, because we do have Chris walking around. Looks like he'll get caught in the back, though. And I don't think uh, Jadine will be spotted in time. So yeah, Tyler will survive with four players, boosting their money, and... Liquid, they need a save. So this is uh, the spot for Tai Lu to really, well, potentially get themselves to seven or eight rounds. Very possible from this position. Maybe uh, Moses will leave the building early today after all. <laughs> Tai Lu I mean, with, uh, you seem to be very keen for Moses to just, <laughs> nah, I'm just, just go kidding. away. I'm just kidding. I like Jason. Jason's a good, a good guy. He's good people. I mean, is there something you want to say to him? <laughs> <laughs> Four players towards B on this eco round for Team Liquid. JDM wielding the UMP is with them. And Stanislaw will make his way into uh, CT apartment towards B. Lovely. A double grenades coming out. And Nitro will not be hard to dispatch off afterwards. Jettisoned into the sun are these Liquid players. They will burn in the atmosphere as they are being dispatched so quickly from this round. Stanislaw has rotated. I like the patience from Ty Loot. No need to get sloppy, even though there's uh, only one player remaining can still be dangerous and definitely is of a P250. Yeah, and his objective here is just to get some damage in as well, get some additional pressure and maybe steal a gun away. That said, the damage won't mean too, too much in as far as the, the ability to buy for the other team, but like a kill with a, a P250 could get him some extra cash for an extra smoke grenade or whatever it might be in the following round. Alas, he's unable to do so, but it uh, will be six rounds now for Tai Lu as they bring themselves back into this one. And they really give themselves a workable amount of rounds, even if the, if the uh, journey on the first half is to stop here, but it does not look like that would be the case. They have a great position. Oh, that's a good, oh wow, yeah, Nitro almost getting taken down as well. That's really interesting because it's like they position themselves to avoid the grenade going behind sandbags. And I, I feel like that grenade should be going behind the sandbags and hit two of them in, next to sandbags instead. So they are really unlucky that that happened. Really unlucky because you got banana, there's a window on the wall behind the car. To the right of the window, you throw the grenade, it goes behind the sandbags, right? But they could basically mess up the grenade and did more damage by accident. So that really sucks for Liquid, but there we go. Say la vie. Got Tyloo now moving in for the A play. Looks like they're not going to be messing around with anything else. No presence on Banana. Liquid very passive on Banana though. They might not realize this until it happens. But they do have a two-man setup on quads. This could be a very fast round. Indeed it is. Balcony push coming in at the same time. Surely this will get traded. Indeed he will. Somebody taking him down and making him nobody. JDM repositioning, drawing his gun and getting the kill somehow. Great repositioning while he was caught in an awkward spot. That leaves Mo alone. One versus three. He's got a bomb, but he needs to thin out these numbers before that plant comes in. That's what he's looking for in the moment. Crouching into the angle. JDM down to 20 HP and that model will allow him to take Nitro down at, at the same time. So he's given himself an option, but there's one unknown and that's Elige. Where is Elige? That's a question for Mo. 
Yeah, he definitely has an ability to take a plant now if he wants, but he really wants to get that extra kill and to see what's going on towards CT here. And this does obviously give him the option to go all the way towards B, but at some point with the time, he's just going to have to commit to running and just that his guess is correct. And that is what he's already doing right now as he starts to sprint towards B. Very confident play here from Mo. Love how he used the Molotov as well and then goes for the, the angle towards the top of mid. Very smart play. But can he close around one versus two now? Yeah, he's done the, na the National Enquirer plant. The bomb is completely exposed. So Liquid, he could be Banana playing an off angle. He could pop out for a quiet one. Oh, that's a almost a spray transfer. The second burst will be enough. Two headshots for Mo. Hello. Score is tied up just when you thought it was safe for Liquid to dominate the half. It is seven to seven. Yeah, that's quite the clutch. And, and Mo, or Captain Mo as he's sometimes referred to, is definitely a pretty smart and strong player. Obviously, we saw that misstep with the Deagle uh, previously, but um, it's hard to question um, that he, you know, his, his skill at the game. So we'll see now as things are evened up that Tai Lu will be in a great stead from a money perspective. We've got the AWP out of somebody and all the nades as well. So everything they could possibly want here. Three men from Liquid, though, to really challenge. But Tai Lu's grenades have so far been more effective. Yeah, but there are grenades in return. Grenades and flashbangs, but there'll be no blind barbecues. More flashes coming in. Everybody's blind, but it's Elise to go down and the Knights are able to trade. AK spam for days on Banana, but Liquid will not be deterred. UMP coming in. This is our town, Liquid is saying. CT man advantage for the time being, but two of them are very deep towards A, so no info in that direction. And now everything starts to come down once the utility is depleted, deployed. What an important re-aggression from Liquid, because they invested so much utility on Banana to not have a, situ to have a situation where they're down a man or, or similar. That is unacceptable in that spot. And so I love that they took the risk there. It was so needed and it worked out brilliantly for them. Now they just sit passively onto a two-man setup on either bomb side. They take the classic pit positions so that the two players can play off of each other. Same thing on Banana as well. So Ty Lu, they just need to rely on good team play, good trading, effective use of the remaining utility that they have to win this round. Can they get the players in pit, though? That's a really big question. And there it is, that position, that headshot angle is tough to deal with, but Bentet is going to tap away twists out of the round. Sent back to the bench now as JDM is rocking the UMP. Never seen so many SMG and rifle kills in a game from JDM, I feel like. It's now Bentet's left alone in the one versus three clutch with players all around him. How on earth do you pull this off? Oh, almost, almost, but not quite. The, the transfer was there from Bentet. But he can't get the last man. The, the decision for JDM not to pop out and try to trade his teammate uh, from the T towards Ivy turns out to be really strong for Liquid towards the end there because they, after get killing the other player in Pit, they thought Pit was clear. Somebody goes back towards Banana expecting more CTs to come and get shot, shot in the back. So JDM made it a lot easier for his team. Ben Tet, though, almost ruined everything. You see Zeus barking orders at his team during halftime. Again, Peacemaker unable to do the same at this tournament. Tai Lu, though, with seven rounds on the board, moving into their CT side. Pretty. Oh, look at there that. Look is. at that handsome fool. Look at him. Look at those eyebrows. Strong eyebrows, Dan. All right, so pistols abound. We have the HE there onto somebody. That's basically all the utility, seemingly, uh, for Tai Lu left at that point. So. Ooh, aggression and apps as well. Brave, brave play here from DD. What? Oh, the close range with the USP. All right, easy does it, DD, as he now is going to be able to fall back and away from that position. And we see the rest of Tyler begin to drift upwards towards that B-bomb site now. The assistance is there. More help, though, needed on the CT side for Ty Lu. Nice play pushing through the smoke, as is JDM. Not going to work out for them. It's better to say it's a complete failure. Now the cavalry coming, flying through the smoke on a motorbike like Delta Force Chuck Norris firing the missiles. Let's go. If you're a fan of Tai Lu, it's time to start cheering. I want to see that logo, man. The logo's so gangster. I want to see it in the major. I, I have to say that like that the the place that where the, this this position on a pistol round from a CT to me is just insane. 
Because you, you only get close range <laughs> fights and you have to hit people like in the head. At least it's mad tilted, yo. Yeah, it's like you don't expect someone to stand there. And, you, and if they are, you're going to kill them. Because it's a terrible spot. I, in my opinion, I don't know. It's a hard spot to get frags at the very least. But he did it. Maybe he just understands how, how super sick he is the game. Or well, not this round at the very least. Here come the tech Oh nines. my god, did you see that flashbang there? It was, no, we'll, we'll ignore that. <laughs> did you it see that happen. flashbang? It didn't happen. For those of you at home, normally from that position, old Inferno and you... You bounce the flash off the top of the barrels to sail over the boost position, if you will. But he just basically threw a flash at himself. That's panic right there. That's panic, Dan. He's like, I need help, man. I can't even think about what I need to do. I'm just going to throw this flash straight in my face. At least I'll go out blind, you know. Take the pain, just take the pain away. That's what he's asking for. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, he's had some time to calm things down. As we have, oh, the lineup there for HZ. Pulls out the USP, almost gets every single player. The quad kill will be enough, perhaps. Bentet and Mo, the only men standing, but the bomb has to be planted here by JDM. They may wait these CTs for such an occasion as they don't want to necessarily give themselves up. And they want to know exactly where JDM is. That's the, uh, that's the, the cat and mouse game that you often find in a situation like this. That said, we do have Mo who just brazenly checking every position on the bomb site and now they're likely making the call that wait it's actually clear here and they have Ben set over towards CT spawn taking a goosey gander towards this B bomb site which is actually now where JDM is going so crazy play from Mo to just push into A like that by himself but now they know what's up Ben set with that good angle it's a nice start on A and a nice finish on B from Tai Lu, weathering the storm there from Team Liquid trying to barrel through the apartment's area. And uh, that puts the Liquid money in a sticky situation. Look at this man, they got drilled like they were on Grinder Dan. Just gonna leave that out there for a bit. <laughs> just just uh, let's have a bit of walker science there, just to highlight just what you said. Anyway, eight to nine is the score now, so uh, we get Tai Lu in advantage and they should continue to do so. Going for that classic anti-eco play that we love to see. Just get your rifles in there, just end the round quickly, rush down it. don't let the teams actually do anything in this round. Bentet falls, but it was not in vain. The rest of the teammates survive with a round. And the other good thing about that kind of situation is that you actually make a lot of money in a sense because you don't, because the round doesn't go on for ages, you don't end up using a lot of grenades. So you actually make a lot of a saving on, on, a, on, a grena on your grenades. Uh, in such a short round like that. So 10 to 8, Tyloo now. But back is Liquid with the AKs. Yeah. Wonder if uh, Liquid are going to start to get hot under the collar just yet. 8 to 10. By no means are Tyloo running away with things. And rounds can be made very expensive very quickly by a T side. Tyloo. Standard stuff, starting with three towards the B bomb site. Ben Tet will deploy a smoke grenade and rotate back towards A. But DD's not far behind him, so a lot of faith in Tyler. This is a very early rotate for that second man from the B bomb site, and Liquid are looking to capitalize on this. They left, it, they left the AWPA on his own Mo, instantly traded by Twist. Yeah, that's a bad sign. You can see that DD is trying to rush to do something here. Some spray to catch that planter. Can't quite do it, though. Safe behind the coffins as he gets sprayed down from the boost position by a liege bentet now looking to get himself over the coffins jumping over the smoke here have to be careful could very easily just get taken down in that position and you've got players all over the place here for liquid looking to hold this down just h said now and it looks like tai Lu are going to come crashing down in this round potentially unless hz can do the unthinkable here there's not really that much time Let's have a kit though. Finds himself another headshot. Surely not. Another play from H said as before he perhaps dies or falls back. And indeed, Alij will be the one to catch him there. But he did do a lot of extra damage there. Two two kills um, from H said is some nice pressure. And uh, unfortunately for Tyler, they don't really have any money in the bank. Yeah, they broke, man. So as as good as that damage was, Liquid have uh, the breathing room of an eco round. Although. Okay, so Didi's dropped a, a lot of cash in this round. I mean, he's still got a good average with his uh, with his teammates, so it's not terrible. But you do wonder what, what other things you could do with that money in future rounds. One round behind our Team Liquid at the moment. Very quick rotation from them. So you do wonder if that's a hard counter from Liquid. Like if they if they were expecting that. Look at the damage done. 
Elige uh, taking some as well. Stanislaw making no... Not trying to hide the fact that he's pushing through the uh, balcony position, but Didi still focused on short. Yeah, UMP at this range is very dangerous. Just needs to get a very... Oh, that could have been too... So close there. Additional damage in the P250. Also dangerous here from Bentet. Can't find the connection though. CZ comes into play. CZ goes out of play. Just Mo left now coming up middle and he will be spotted. He'll be heard soon enough. And uh, the one will be planted. Wow, gets a kill though despite everything. Down to 34 points of health. He's got an AK. He's got some Kevlar as well. But the health is rather low as he starts to... Crawl his way into positions here, into angles, looking to see if he can find anybody. Announcing his presence with a smoke grenade, and that will be the end of him. J uh, courtesy of JDM. Nice. 10 to 10. Nice. Buy time for the CTs. See what they can muster. Somebody opting for the UMP to allow himself some grenades. Didi and Bentet with the M4s, as the said. Mo with the silenced M4. So for every team I think we've seen on Inferno so far, it's just been one silence them four. And the rest of them for A4s. Elise just picked up the Mac 10. Two of the five players uh, don't have helmets. So we'll see where how far he gets with that Mac 10. It can still be of use, close quarters in the apartments area, but it's not often you see the CTs in there. Somebody on short, Ben set underneath the uh, well in that position you can see on your cameras, on your screens, on your visors. On your projectors, should you have a projector. 10 to 10. Elige, very aggressive. But again, not really finding anything. It can go through apartments, but nobody there for the CTs. Yeah, that's not a common angle too, I have to say. You can see, yeah, Elige was not, he was not thinking about that angle. He's thinking about a lot of other positions, but he was not ready for that. Scary off angles. Well, scary pushes to be had potentially from Liquid as they now commit towards B. Tai Lu, without any counter grenades really available, there's one flashbang. That's actually doing a lot of work here, delaying, but we've seen this position earlier today. It's very disadvantageous for the CT. DD with a one for one, that's actually pretty good from that spot after he had no support to really work off of. Now Ben Tet is just sitting around the smoke here, unable to find a way in. Three players ready to go now for Tai Lu. The fourth has arrived. Interestingly, Mo is boosting HZ, but surely it should be the other way around because Mo's the one with the silence to four, so that would be uh, less obvious. Stanislaw around the smoke, charging through. Only one kill for him, though, Twist 48 b And it's down to one versus one. Bentec charging through the smoke, finding the angle just before Twist does. A very expensive round for both teams, but it's Tyloo back in the lead. But their money is going to absolutely suck. And with the plant from Team Liquid, their buy is coming straight back. So this is going to be a very difficult round for Tyloo. Their buy is going to suck. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's a really big test, isn't it? Because obviously, it, this is like that one for two situation. Uh, both teams have a ruined economy. Both teams have spent almost all of their, well, basically all of their money. So whoever wins this round, considering, considering this is round 22, it could just carry the, t the winner of this round, you know, a good few rounds ahead. And that would be basically almost, you've almost won the match at that point. So really crucial round for both teams, this one. We'll see how it is opened up here by both teams. We have three from Tyloo uh, providing quick pressure towards Banana early on. And a pretty fast timing here from JDM. 20 seconds into the round, he's already picking aggressively uh, with that AWP of his in towards the arch and quad positions. And you can see the Tyloo taking the gamble. Got so one player playing deep on Banana. That's Mo. And the rest of the team, four strong on the A sites. Nice to see they have not been deterred um, from the 4-8 based on the previous round. Mo still has a smoke grenade to deploy bottom of Banana, so he can keep people entertained for a while. Indeed, he is backing off and doing exactly that, but he's uh, dropped his smoke a bit more shallow than he could have. And that might invite Liquid to have a look towards Banana. As you can see, it's been put by the logs, but I mean, he was standing in a tree position, so... He, he had taken a few steps back before he dropped it, so I really feel like he could have been deeper in the arch. So Liquid may have uh, been allowed somewhat back into Banana, but their rotation is here for Tyloo, a third player, DD, making his way. The CTs have one grenade, one flashbang. That said, there are 30 seconds left for Liquid. They've uh, still got two people towards A, so it seems they wanted to show presence towards B and go back towards A, but DD is also headed in that direction. Somebody hunting for pre fire but Stanislaw will get the headshot. The timing was pretty huge there. He said has to deliver something, but gets shut down by Twist. Now onto DD. Oh, 
JDM coming in with a fast one straight to the face. Two players for Tyloo remain, and they will likely have to save here and then force by the next round with the remaining three. There's nothing else they can do. There is nothing else they can do. In fact, I would imagine that Ben Tetten uh, will be able to drop a UMP, and then he'll also have a smoke grenade, and then Mo has enough for a UMP and... Maybe and actually to refill on grenades actually actually so and the other player's gonna need for like one grenades and the UMPs and armors so it's they will have something to work with I guess well it depends like if they it's gonna suck James <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to find a way to make this buy sound good but it's gonna suck three players will be two players will be on pistols no one player will be on pistol Tyloo timeout. I believe this is actually timeout number two from them, but Liquid did it for them last time because they couldn't figure it out. 11 2, 11. And yeah, this, this sucks for Tyloo. I mean, but there's, there's. What can they really do in this particular round? Try and put these two M4s to work. They don't really have the money to. Drop two UMPs and force it up. No? no. Like they're not going to do it. No, I, I think they need to, to keep the money on the team together for their next buy. I think it's too much to ask at this point, but it's awkward because even don't, you the don't next want rounds, yeah, it's gonna suck. You don't want Liquid to. I mean, we're looking at thirteen eleven essentially, yeah, right. Which is like this is not the state of the game where you want to do that. But I don't really don't know how much choice there is for them. Yeah, uh, I think they just need to to brunt it and see what Bentet and Mo can do. Bentet top mid, Mo towards the B bomb site. Mo's rotating towards the uh, A site, and I, I would like to see the uh, M4s used together. They need to take a gamble, obviously, at this point, and they're, they're doing exactly that, putting four towards A. But it's a, it's a passive four, which is fine. It's a gamble. You could go aggressive and try to do things, but that might be uh, expected of Liquid, from Liquid, rather. So they've gambled, they've gambled A, and if they're wrong, they can just try and save these rifles for the, for the next round. Well, they have Mo towards B though, so if, if B does get assaulted, then Mo could very well just die. And they've only got one, one M4 to save. Yeah, so it's an interesting one. I mean, again, they could have had the two M4s, two MPs, and a pistol. You know, everyone with, with armor and very like maybe one or two grenades each. But, but yeah, that's that's the problem is that it's just, it's it's, it's very painful, isn't it? To play with limited grenades, I mean, that limited. Since since their money's together, Mo could keep he could keep trying to hold on to construction at least for the team to rotate because the smoke down towards CT. Oh, he needs to get back again. Just hold construction, let the team rotate, get your reload in. Ventet's got two flashbangs. You could even make a play through the smoke into the pool area of one of the players. And indeed, he's doing exactly that. Just holding on to construction, get the team ready, get them flashbangs going. Five versus three. One of those three with an AWP. You've got your numbers game. There's the first flash. There's one more to come. There's a crossfire, but how strong can really can Liquid be in this situation? Send a cannon for the in first. DD's taken down. The two rifles are still in play. One versus two now. Mo, he's got more to do. He needs the ace. Not going to quite get it, but maybe at least that damage will play a part in the rounds to come. Yeah, and this is this is thing too. Like their money's because their money sucks so badly here. Is like still and. I think like if they if they were to buy here right, it would only be s marginally better than what they could have forced within the last round. So that's why the decision is so hard. Um, obviously they're going to go for a half buy it seems, but we'll see what they can get done with this half buy because you never know in a game of Counter Strike. You never know. Pistols are very strong, and it only takes uh, a for some fortunate timing as well. And you can win rounds. No utility at all for the Tyloo side to work with. One, round. I think it's always nice. I mean, it depends on what you want to do, right? They've put the numbers towards A. I think if you put the numbers towards B, they probably buy a flashbang and uh, flash around the corner. But since they haven't made that play, they'll try and spam the close quarters of apartments. Not going to yield results on this occasion. But there we go. Such is life. It is what it is. So, Liquid have found the A side is cleaned out and uh, ready for a plant, and it's just Mo lurking around with a Deagle. Win. On 
Yeah, they've gone absolutely nothing done in this round. It's gonna. They've. I mean, they, they were basically all, always banking on this round here. They go double up actually, moan somebody. And if they if they don't win this round, it's it's very scary. <laughs> it gets very scary. Liquid on thirteen, closing in on that fourteen. Got the UMP still there for Stanislaw actually. You say scary, but beyond the pistol, they've won one round of six. I mean, obviously, a fair few of those are eco rounds, but it doesn't does not uh, does not read well on paper. That's for oh, sure. Oh no, yeah, I mean, scary for Tyler. Yeah, I'm talking about Tyler. Yeah, that's not a good start. No, <laughs> yeah, not a good start. Immediately indeed. taken down towards Banana. Tyler, they need a response. I don't know that they can just sit sit on this and wait for t Liquid to come to them because because it's going to be. They will be outnumbered at this point. Yeah, and, and that's the really difficult thing when you want to be play like that and you don't have any utility really. So you work with another pick coming there. Somebody trying to get a peek there in the apartment. It's not really working out. So now a three versus five. A said flashed. Really nice flash there from Liquid. And they'll take the A bomb side very easily. Now Tyloo have to save these two guns. And Liquid, they can afford to go out and hunt. They have a decent amount of money. They're going to win this round um, no matter what. So they can afford to go in and pressure here. I think that they should try to do so. They have five players left alive. Yeah, they've got enough money to hunt in this round. So send send in the drones. Send in the drones. Sanus Law, very expendable. With that UMP. Good Ben set. Nice. He used the footsteps to allow him to understand exactly the timing of when to start spraying. And he gets a free two frags there. Nicely done. And it looks like Liquid were likely thinking that that was the, the uh, maximal investment there anyway. 14 rounds to them, 11 to Tyloo. Tyloo can get themselves a full buy here as well though, with the UMPs. I do wonder how the game would look if the UMP was like $1,800 or something, you know, or $1,700, $1,600, like it's just like four, five hundred, six hundred more dollars. I, th I think you could, uh, you'd be better off just changing the kill bonus. But anyway, they have bought around what they saved, Tyloo. Very fast aggression from Liquid. And uh, I thought Mo might have got a second while Stanislaw was the one close to the wall there. The flames did the job instead of the uh, gun, but as long as the job is done. No response to the initial pick from Team Liquid. That is in response. Three towards A for Tyloo. And again, they, uh, they're they playing two in the site. Interestingly, nobody in the pit area whatsoever. Often it's very strong to have someone in somebody's position, for example, and somebody in the pit area, which can be facing short or it can be under the cart. There's some flexibility there. So I'm very curious to see how this uh, this plays out. Of course, they have Ben Tet as well, who is over towards Arch, but can focus towards short, but the numbers game is coming towards the long area, and they may get caught out. We've got DD on the rotation towards Speedway. What is the play of Liquid? El Tyloo just in, like, huddling in that A-bomb site, awaiting the push. They have no one in pit, no one on balcony, no one in graveyard. And right now there's a player sort of isolated as DD. He's by himself. If he doesn't win this one versus one, things get really bad here for Tyloo, but he does. And he holds down this position. No trade frag coming in, but at least now. Starting to work into the bomb site. Aced is dead. Somebody's dead. Just Bentet left, but Bentet might be enough. 3K from Bentet so fast. And that will be Tyloo holding on. The ironic thing is, if you're liquid, when are you expecting three people sight, nobody graveyard, nobody pit? Like, you're, you're always going to look away and look for somewhere else. So, so ben, ben Tet manages to excel in the mayhem. But there's still money for a full buy, and there'll be money in the next round as well, should one be required. Sanislaw surrounded by flames there. 14 to 12. The double ops on Tyloo now. Seen it before. We see it again. Can they keep Liquid on the back foot? Stanislaw getting annihilated by grenades. His belly wasn't really in mid or bottom of Banana. But still, they they found it. It's kind of in between the two. Not often you see people standing there getting wrecked by grenades, but there we go. Tyloo with the uh, smoke on banana towards the middle upper area as opposed to down in the arch. 
Liquid for now, we'll focus on A. Two players in pit, or rather one in graveyard and one in pits. Right now for uh, Tyloo on yeah. the defense. <laughs> I could have said for Liquid to fight against on the A site, that would have been a good save there. And Liquid look, just looking to ready their execution of a set piece into the bomb site. Here they go. A drilled play. Nitro, the first man to make the kill, looking for Ben set in pits. You can see how well dr Liquid are drilled in this position, and they will find themselves a very quick site take. And that is a big problem for Tyloo. It would be too awkward, really, for Mo to come in and save this, as even with the help of DD. They're up against four players. There's still grenades here to be utilized by the Liquid side. And this would be the round that puts Liquid onto 15, so Tyloo's money is not going to be amazing. So they definitely would want to conserve one of these two guns, that's for sure. Yeah, they need to get out there, man, with both with both of these guns. One player's got 1,800, so at least that will be something. That, of course, they just went around, so they're going to get diddly squat for losing this round, Tyloo. They are in a lot of trouble now. And it's interesting, you saw, uh, or I saw, somebody playing towards the library position. You don't often see opens play there anymore on, on Inferno, at least at the moment. They like to be on the corner so they can f they can um, look towards short, long balcony, make their way towards the site if they need to, rather than get trapped and smoked off in the library position. And once those first kills came in, somebody tried to make his way to the site, just got sprayed down through smoke before he could... Uh, do anything about it. So they saved some weapons, Tyloo, and it's Liquid with match point for AKs to AWP for the T side. Lick Tyloo with whatever they can muster to M4s, UMP, CZ, and the big green gun. Starting with three towards the B bomb site. Mo off to a good start in apartments, but there's another T there. He does not want to go back to the well. So there's an early pick for Tyloo, but Liquid are in control of apartments. And uh, Stanislaw starting to creep up banana. Nana. Do you mean Diggity? We'll see if the Orp of Mo can get in a position to work some magic. As Liquids have dropped the bomb in to uh, top mid there, interestingly. As Alige gets itself onto quad roof. So much information here for Alige. And also, if he just holds these positions, look at how. Oh, is he going to push further along the balcony? <laughs> really, really cool push there from Alige. You don't see that every day or every match. Oh, no. That is for sure. Towards, towards B, JDM's been creeping in. There's a gap in the smoke that was deployed by the CTs, but really, they would have heard the scope because he scoped very close to the car, so I would have be cool to have seen a pop flash. But now we've got the T streaming all over the place. As you can see, JDM up close, but he'll get traded immediately. All of a sudden, it's Nitro versus four. This is exactly what Tyloo needed, not only to win a round, but to win with most of their team intact, some team wounding going on. But ultimately, Nitro, I don't think he's made any sounds just yet, but uh, they're making it as hard as possible for him to peek in any direction. Mo is there. That is perfect for Tyloo. Four people alive. They can really spread the wealth, and they need to. They don't have the cash. Liquid do have the cash. But what happened for Liquid in that round? I, that, that's one of those rounds where I just love to like load it up into one of those demo analysis tools to just see like positionally like what happens. Because it looked really awkward going on to that B-bomb side uh, ultimately. And uh, especially with all the information that Alige got, um, it was interesting. Like obviously at that point, from his perspective, you could think, okay, but they're playing that three-man setup again. Everybody's on the side potentially, but just based on how they're positioned, maybe there could have been one in pit. Um, but perhaps, perhaps they just felt like um, having Alige show deep would keep all those players towards A to allow them an easier take of the B bomb site. But Tyler were able to read the play pretty well and had the P uh, right players in the right position, playing the delay game. And uh, eventually, the clock was the worst enemy of uh, Liquid in that situation. Two snipers continue for the Tyloo side. They need two from two. And this is uh, almost the last stand for Liquid because this has cleaned out their cash. If they are to lose this round, they have to defend a potential overtime with not much. Somebody spotting a foot headed towards the B banana, well, the banana area, but that's not really anything unusual at this point. JDM seeking to destroy. But we've got the change in approach from Tyloo. Hello, the orbs Ooh. are firing off and uh, the uh -oh. kills all across the map. Three versus five, still doable, but uh, not by any means ideal. 
Had one overtime today, and it could be another one if Liquid can't find a way to save this round. That needed to be a connection there from JDM. Still searching for a way in. Forward position, though, JDM can keep trying to poke towards Arch side. Or looks like he will reposition towards Quad, though, as he looks for a player towards the pit position. But Tyler with a, a huge advantage there. They the can play incredibly passively. Oh, my <laughs> God. As I say that, somebody absolutely heinous push in the back there, forcing the action from Liquid. And they will win the round. Tai Lu getting to 14. And there's no money for Liquid. There that is, is, there's no money. That is awesome. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that push is completely that absurd. Is, and it's perfect it is, yeah. because it's really nice to show that you are capable of doing such things. I can't believe that he went for that push. <laughs> I cannot. Like the, that's like saying, well, the one way for them to get back into the round is if I just run out and die here. And uh, then they're back in the round. That is it's, that's an outstanding push. It's crazy, man. Psychologically, that is great for Tyloo to do something as insane as that. And indeed, Liquid have roughly $2,000 on most people. Elise is there with 2800 <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, I don't know if, if it's like if there's value in dropping an AK there or something. He'd be left with a Glock and like a flashbang, but he's going to buy the UMP and it'll be four Tech Nines on the rest of the team. So uh, that's... Uh, that's like one of the situations where sometimes I wonder if like in the player's perspective, it's like, well, we've got a five versus three advantage looking pretty good. But imagine how good it would look if it was a five versus two advantage. <laughs> <laughs> I can handle this. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> uh, insane, man. That's crazy. But can they survive the Tech Nines, James? Who knows? They've made their way through the grenades and all oh, the CT's got to get caught off completely off guard. Doing massive damage. Look at all the red in the bars. And Didi's, he's the man in the right position. Team Liquid, they'll feel compelled to push this site now. They are stuck behind the smoke, and Didi is just wrecking fools at the moment. Twins with 29 HP, the last man standing. How much can he expect to do from this position? Not much, because Mo will deny him. We are headed to overtime number N. James, I bet you Moses is loving this. Maybe he is. I, I mean, he's absolutely loving this. He, he may well be. <laughs> he may well be. Oh... All right, so again, I feel like overtime is often the big reset button for a lot of teams. I think you know you could, th you have that all that uh, all these rounds in regular time where your decision making, or rather, you know, rounds which are won and lost can really impact your economy, and there's a lasting effect. Um, there's momentum and so on. But when there's an overtime, the momentum's broken, generally speaking, or in 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 a large part at least, and the money's reset. You get to play with all the guns. So this should be a great opportunity here for Liquid to right the ship as uh, we see immediate pressure from three players from Tyloo onto Banana. There we go. Nice aggressive smoke grenades from the CT side. That's what we needed earlier, but it's somebody to get picked <laughs> off. In the apps. That rare apps apartments push. Guess what? Didn't work out. <laughs> he's, dude, he's going for it now. He's like, it worked, guys. It worked. Let's go. I, I'm going to take more aggressions here. But th this is a good way to actually deal with losing someone early. They, they actually are able to play three on A now. They've got that deep banana control. Liquid have to make a decision here and uh, and either try to challenge that smoke and re by re you know basically see that Tyler taking a gamble and just challenge the smoke because they have time or just go for the push on the site. And it will be the latter. Mo making his way towards the library, but he smoked off from his teammates who are both on the site. And you see it's just Bedlam once again, everybody charging all over the place. Mo unable to get that kill. I thought he was dead on, but unfortunately for him, it didn't work out. That leaves Didi alone. That was, you know, the, the second last push with the AWP was fun, but the apartments one, not sure about that. Yeah, this, it's, it's very, very aggressive. Yeah, it's... I mean, if, it, if, if he does that and it works, it probably breaks Liquid's brains as human I, beings. Like, yeah, yeah, I think that would set him on tilt. <laughs> yeah. I think that would be a massive tilt. So, not saying it's right or wrong, but it's dangerous. I mean, if you I'll know your opponent there. super well, right, and you, and you know that if it works, like, let's say it's got like a 30% chance to work or something, or 25% chance, and you're like, but if it does, it's going to tilt the entire team. And they're yeah, gonna, you, <laughs> they're he, could, lose he could win the half by making that play. He could win the whole half. Um, that, that, that's like, th that is something that, that is a thing that could happen, but it's like, you never want to play like that you never want to take your, your you know risk like that but for your right, right there is I, I want to see it i want to see it work <laughs> it's just, yeah. you know i want i want the i want the bedlam anyway tyloo will have a uh, little issue buying in this particular round mo though awp no uh helmet not that it's necessary versus ak's everybody else will invest in the helmets and they've got no money left after this tyloo if they lose this round if you go 0-2, you probably go 0-3. I think that's safe to say in most cases for CT overtimes. 
So this is a very important round for their survival in this match. Mo again has been uh, left on his own in B. DD is going back and forth though. He's got a flashbang as well. And, and DD, he can flash. He can theoretically flash into pool while his teammate's facing. I like the different setup from Tyloo too. I don't think they've run like a three-man uh, quad setup before or like mm. you know, three towards quad. So this will be interesting to see how successful this is. As we should see Liquid actually barreling into in towards the core position. I'm not sure how heavily they'll go for a, a wrap or emphasize the arch side. It remains to be seen, but if they, you know, whatever number of players goes through quad side, Tidy have a good defense set up here. The grenades actually will do a good job actually repositioning some of these players, and they have to reset up in the side. The fourth man, DD, has made his way towards A as well, so Liquid are going to be hard pressed to make this work. And now the frags start to come in, but somebody delivering to being covered by Bentet in the meantime. HZ as well go one for one. JDM with a lot of work to do. One versus three. Surely they force him into the point of no return to take him out or just peek him and shoot him in the face. Either one works 16 to 16. A key round for Tyloo to win, as aforementioned. Three plays surviving as well. That's a plus for them. Liquid will have no issue buying, so it's all to play for in the last round of the first half of the overtime number. I don't know how many today. It's a great start to the day. First day of Swiss matches here at the uh, at the qualifier. Yeah, I mean, we've <laughs> we, we have a lot of overtimes, James. We seem to cast many overtimes. And we get Nitro going with a couple grenades here, just pressuring those forward spots on Banana. And trying to take that away from Tai Lu for the time being. However, Mo is not too deterred. At least uh, he will uh, get up a shot or two first before he finally falls back and away. And I wonder whether Liquid will actually realize that Banana's for free at this point in time. Or whether they'll just play a slow approach here and just not even test it too much. Yeah, you do wonder if the lack of utility will make Liquid feel like they're going towards... They should go towards B, but... Stannis Lord, the, uh, the leader of the team, focused on the A site, so maybe uh, it will go unawares. At least dialing up an arch smoke. And let's see what he's doing. Are they trying to draw CTs towards A? Because the bomb is moving back. Maybe just staying behind. No, they seem to be focusing towards Banana, so it seems it's either a split of the B bomb site or a complete fake coming in, but. We've already got Bentet rotating through towards speedway position, so we'll see how this plays out for the T's. I don't know if they'll be, if this will be heard by the CTs. Oh, it looks like Bentet just heard just in the nick of time there. The times where I gets one frag at least, that's actually an okay result. It's, that's workable. As he's challenged by Paul, gets one. Oh, I think he got a dig there onto Elise through the smoke. I don't think he knows, but that's a huge amount of damage done by DD Mo trying to finish them off now with the AWP. Somebody coming in as well from the side. And that's going to be another round for Tai Lu. The B split did not work. Yeah, it was a really nice read from Tai Lu positioning themselves in the uh, in the correct areas to deal with that push and the smokes down at the front of the site just ended up being the death knell for Liquid in that round. Tyloo take a lead moving into the second half. It's Tyloo's turn to be on the T side now, which means they can dictate the pace with their lead. What do Liquid do in response to that? We expect aggression towards the uh, banana area. Double orbs from Liquid, Nitro of the AWP. And as one of the stronger teams, this is a really big result. This would be an insanely good result for Tyloo and would increase their chances so dramatically, I think, should they be able to win this as, you know, you know, three wins and you're through and three losses and you're done. So this would certainly help them. We'll see, though. There's still a lot of play to be had, and that's a nice boost deck. The flick from JDM is strong as they fall back and away. Ty Lu, though, looking to respond quickly as they, they actually push the smoke. JDM on these angles is just scanning for these players. Can't quite find one just yet, but he might get a shoulder here from Bentet relatively soon. The grenade comes out. They might push him because they saw the trajectory. They knew he was close. Very fast frag there. Stanislaw forced to action. Gets himself one before the smoke blooms. A three versus four situation is what Tyloo were left with. Three of the four for the CTs on the A site. Didi's got to be careful. If he pushes through, he is surely done as there is a player with an off angle on the balcony position. Didi, they will hear him on fire as well. You see Twist having a look just in case, but not overextending too much. The smoke will waste some time. There's still a minute on the clock for Tyloo, so they can relax. You see Mo, he's got the bomb and he's in short on his own, playing for picks, and he lands one and manages to escape as well. What the hell's going on? 
And he spots Stanislaw too, giving up his uh, previous positions. Twist now. He's really the X factor in this round. This off angle is so strong. We've seen him get triple kills here multiple times in the past. Can it be this round as well? There's already one. They've they know that he's there, or he could have dropped off. Is he checking for it? Now he drops off, and that's the power of this position. You get a frag and drop off, and the instant repositioning there, and that's going to be Twist saving the round. It's that position is the only position I've seen just repeatedly on A, where Tyloo have just have so much trouble dealing with it. They, I don't think I've seen it one time where they've actually been able to answer it well. Yeah, and I, I, I guess they couldn't identify Tyloo that uh, there were so many players towards the A side, but it was mad. Mo just in short on his own, just crab walking with the bomb, just picking off a player and then managing to get back to the top of short. And I thought, what are they going to rotate? What are they going to do? But uh, it didn't work out for them. 17 to 17. It's hard not to root for Tyloo because they're the underdogs. No, they come from Chinese CS where crazy things happen. We've seen it ourselves. And uh, they're really putting up a big fight here. The double orbs continue for Team Liquid onto Nitro and JDM. Tyloo with a full buy with five AKs, all the grenades they want. Tyloo have one tactical pause remaining. And we are soon back into things. Right, well, yeah, 17 17 indeed. Double orbs, fun times ahead, I'm sure. That early pickoff from JDM with the boost on mid last round was pretty stellar. Ooh, that's a that's a very deep incendiary. God damn. Throwing it all the way from top mid, I think. Interesting. It's an interesting incendiary to throw from CT's perspective because you don't really get anything from it, right? Because if you get it on the slope, like you delay them a few seconds, but then then they just take the positions as uh, as per normal, and you, you know you yourself have not gained anything positionally for it. So a curious. Early use of an incendiary. Either way, Tyler looking to burst out of the, into top mid here to force the CTs back. JDM once again, you got to be careful. Caught with a smoke in his, well, just deploying a smoke, and that's going to be starting the push off for Tyloo. Yeah, I think that repick was insane from him. He's fast, but he's not that fast. I think we've got a crossfire and a bit for the CTs, or we did, but Twist got decapitated. Stanislaw is still there, however. Elige with a 2k in the meantime. From library, no less, that's not an easy position to get multi-frags from. Somebody's in the graveyard and Stanislaw's been put six feet under, but somebody's on his own. One versus two to keep Liquid off of match points. I don't even know if they know where Elise is. Doesn't matter, Nitro's there as well. AWP to finish things off for Liquid. Elise just saving Liquid in that round completely. I think, obviously, if he, if he smoked off or you know, if anything like that happens, then it's, it'll entirely have a very strong chance to win the round. So... Big plays from Elige to keep Liquid in this one. But it could still go to another overtime. We have a decent buy here for Tyloo in, insofar as the utility, or rather, sorry, the weapons are concerned. But uh, we can see Venta is going to pick up some utility. I always would prefer to see some anyone dropping the AK for Venta here just because he's just been so beast um, for the Tyloo side. He's up there with 27 kills, yeah. but for his team, it's Mo leading the charge, tied by Twist, both on 31 kills for their respective teams. Match point, Liquid. It's been a long game so far. I would love to see more. <laughs> yeah. I would love to see more. And we absolutely might. The, the only thing is that I feel like the best way, obviously, to approach Liquid setup is by using a lot of utility, and that's just not what they have. You want to get those smokes down, those flashbangs in, and then you get the big push on where the, when the orps can't see anything. You just obscure the visibility. And we can see Nitro already getting a pick there towards Banana. That really commits Tyloo into this A bomb site now. They have nothing, no vision, no presence towards B. They have to make these entries work. And there's another AWP in position. It's JDM. And there it is. He's going to connect the shot. Second one missed, though. Maybe there's a way in here. Somebody gets himself another headshot there. Elise falling towards Speedway. And all of a sudden, Tyloo! Oh my god. Again, that position is supposed to be so strong. The headshot angle, but heads are being popped, man. And Naya Nitro is smoked off. There's a gap, though. There's a gap. The CZ. Can he get a 180 kill here? Charging into the site and looking for the upgrade. He's got it. Two flashbangs. That's a lovely tap from Nitro. Can he clutch it? No. Somebody will stop him. What a sick round from somebody. 4K from him. 
absolutely just going completely ham on everyone's face with that AK. I do, I do wonder though about the the repeats from JDM there, where there's more than one player. He takes the first one down, but yeah. he goes back to the well when they've got the superior angle. It's two, it's two rounds where the repeat, the repeat has got him picked off where he could have repositioned instead. Yeah. So uh, that, that's maybe something to wonder about. That's exactly uh, where it was, and then a lovely snap onto Elise afterwards. And it, there's a, I wanted to note very quickly the difference, like playing that corner. In comparison, when uh, Tyloo were on the, on the CT side, they've mainly, I think, had somebody with the AWP inside um, the library position, which is less flexible, especially when a smoke goes down. 18 apiece, 3 2, somewhat standard setup, apart from JDM being very forward. Missing the shot, however, opportunity has come and gone. Tyloo already have control of the entire banana area with minute 30 on the clock, so that's something different here. Yeah, uh, I like that play from JDM, trying to kind of get momentum almost immediately into the rounds. Um, and there are ways to make that safe, and it's sort of made safe also just by the fact that you almost never have done it as well. So, unfortunately, you can't land the shot, though. Would have been a big one. But alas. The thing is, well, I, I feel like Lick Tidy must realize as well that Liquid is going to the double up all the time. So again, you know, th there's still very possible for them to try and just get themselves in position on, on B. And I think B is a very good choice against the double ops in this situation. If you get all the smokes down, you can get yourself those entry frags. Uh, retaking with an open two rifles, that is going to be very hard. However, Nitro might even prevent them from taking the bombsite altogether. Yeah, and that will be a distracting force because the leash is boosted up on the flower pots. And uh, I'd be surprised if they look for him after that initial frag. Indeed, oh, somebody running through, but Liege with the last bullet, maybe, landing the headshot, working out for a while. They have possession of construction. Stanislaw creeping in. DD on his last bullet gets a kill. So that's some revenge there. Two on two. DD with 16 HP, control of construction, and both CTs coming in from CT. And Bentes is the one that you want to have in this clutch situation as well. DD alone has picked up the AWP. That's smart. But it looks like Bentet will be the victim of an AWP himself. But there's the trade. The repositioning coming in from DD now as he tries to suggest a repositioning all the way towards the pool side. What is he going to do here? Is he, is, well, he's looking at the wrong direction. This could be really unfortunate for DD. Indeed it is. Twist able to better him, outsmart him in this situation. I do like that, that DD committed there. He actually took a position where he's, where he's saying, I am just going to commit and just hope and pray that the opponent comes in this direction. I mean, he could take another position, yes, but but uh, whatever you do, as long as it's, it's committed, that's the most important thing. Everybody looking focused. Liquid in the lead. And that, again, that's a key. When you buy double ops on a CT side first round of overtime, you definitely want to win that first round in the numbers as well. So Liquid. Continuing with uh, two towards B at the beginning of the round. They're going to have that third person to throw the smoke grenade and then rotate. They'll be content with three. JDM's going for a push for apartments as well with the AWP. Maybe a taste of Ty Lu's medicine. We'll see who gets the dosage once they come through. For now, everybody's static. Who's the closest person? It's somebody. He's just, he's just waiting. He's just standing on the corner of the wall. Somebody's actually expecting somebody in apartments. That's really hard sentence to say based on his name, but there's still no push just yet. Nitro boosted. They must have heard the scope. You can see Tyloo, they're looking for the boost. They're looking for plays towards that. They're looking for the boost. They seem to know everything that. Yeah, and, and they've fallen victims to these kinds of plays before. Like, we can't forget how many rounds these guys have actually played at this point. Uh, it's nearing on 40, so they've got some experience as to how Liquid are playing and vice versa as we get a defensive smoke from Liquid to slow down the push. But Tyloo may consider just holding up and you know, pushing B at some point anyway. They don't have any presence towards top mid. And that's only more of an indicator, I would say, to Team Liquid that Tyloo aren't going to go A because they don't have presence there. And this is, so you can see they're making an information play right now. We've got Stanislaw pushing top mid and Liquid need to rotate immediately. They probably already have should have rotated. Let's see if it's fast enough because in comes the push from Tyloo. Elise charging out of nowhere. Always good for a second kill with Elise, but three very fast kills coming the way of Liquid. But there's a flank coming in on Banana from Stanislaw. You can see the bomb from going down. There's no cover. There are 14 seconds left. How do they do it? Now they've got to win this duel. And indeed they will. The smoke's still down, but now it's gone. Twist opting for an off angle. Wants to stop them crossing. 
Four seconds, three seconds. It's too late, it's oh, too late. He's missed the chance. He's standing in the fountain. He's got a block in the fountain. That <laughs> Feels bad. Feels bad for DD. And for the rest of Tai Lu, that is a big two round lead at this point for Liquid. Second overtime. Will they be able to pull this one out the bag? Or will we see Tai Lu coming back in with some clutch? Power. I, I kind of. I'm expecting a fast A play from Tyloo at this point. I feel like that is just just that pace, that turn of pace. Get Ben set in there. Get somebody in there. Get Didi in there in these positions where they can be very aggressive. Might be uh, the change of pace that they need here to get back into the game. JDM still aggressive. I think that was all the way down mid. He was in apartment for ages in a previous round, but eventually backed off towards the balcony, but still looking down the hall. Growing with confidence. He's on some Ares mode, God of War nonsense. And now he's holding an angle on Boiler. Everything getting quiet. Twist in this faithful position. Can't cover JDM from that angle though. So JDM really uh, has to be careful with his repositioning. So that's a free kill for Tai Lu. After losing the uh, previous round in parts of human error, that's a, a way back into the half. That balcony position is still a problem, but JDM getting picked off towards short certainly helps. Stanislaw moving before shooting, but he won't miss the second shot. Bomb spotted as well, and he's got the angle back. The flashbangs will force him away. He'll go for his timing shot, won't quite land it. And there is the... Uh, Another kill for him. I thought it was a bomb carrier, but no, it's Bentet carrying the bomb, going through the smoke, but nothing doing. Three match points for Liquid. Just one more round for Liquid. Just one more. So all they need to close this down and end the nightmare, which I, I feel like this could be a nightmare for them or feel like a nightmare at this point because I'm sure that they would have expected to have ended this game much earlier. So Tai Lu, though, they seem like, a, a, if I, you know, if I'm not going to lie here, they seem like a, a bunch of fighters, man. They, they're fighting tooth and nail right now. They're, they're scrapping as hard as they can to try to grind out these rounds. And no matter the situation, they're trying their best to get get back into this one. And they're not, I mean, it's only three rounds. It's only three rounds. We've seen them do it on that T side. Uh, so that's CT side, sorry. So you have to wonder though, if they are, if they are brave enough to take the risks that somebody took and the previous, their yeah. previous CT car. Now they're against three match points. Or oh, Mo, he could really get something done with this spam if he finds the right angle. Did he see the boost? I think he did. Nitro gets taken down. Looking for the second player. The repeats are not working out for the Orpers most of the time. But they retain the man advantage. Second player rotating towards Banana. Somebody in apartment spots again. <laughs> Lovely stuff. <start. laughs> Great to see. <laughs> that, but that's, that is one interesting thing that we can maybe go back to in a moment. Um, the apartments and how it's changed on the new Inferno. Perhaps in the, in the Asian Counter-Strike, you get much more apartments play from the CT side. You just don't, and we can explain that why in a moment. As we have Liquid up top middle now, looking for an entry back into the rounds. Tai Lu. Two members on the A sites. And they are in proximity too, so they can help each other out. JDM looking for the pick here. This is very dangerous. JDM is the guy to open this one up. This is the shot though. Announces his presence. Out comes the Tech 9. He's still going back. What's he doing? That's so dangerous. They didn't have time. Oh, DD, look at this positioning. This is exquisite. He's in CT spawn. He's by the well. But it's twist. He's the thirsty one looking for some water, but he will be left. It was a mirage. All that's there is rifles. So that's one of three tests out of the way for Tai Lu. They keep the AWP into this round. They survive with three players. Liquid on the full rebuy. Twist will drop the AWP. And away they go. It's it is very interesting to watch the, uh, the CT aggression from somebody. Yeah. And, and if it will continue in each round. No, absolutely. And it, it, and it is like the apartments. It, just, it may be that in Asia you get a lot more play there and the reason why CTs don't find a, a success there or why it's not as good as it used to be is because the, the corridor is a bit more open and there's no bedroom to play off of so it's just harder to run setups there and also the windows is a bit more open as well on the balcony itself so it's just generally a worse risk than it used to be um, for the CTs to try to make setups there and 
well, entirely <laughs> they found some success in uh, in this in this match so far on it. No, looking to try to take these angles towards top middle from arch side. Four members quick to respond towards A if needed for Tai Lu at the moment. As Liquids are playing quite patiently, trying to see if there is to be any aggression. Perhaps fearful of somebody's antics. JDM was left to have a look towards Banana. Nothing seen just yet. They know where the AWP is now, but they don't know if there's one or two. Team Liquid. JDM watching the bottom of mid. But uh, it seems that the focus is A, and Bentet's rotating back towards the B bomb site, maybe just in case because DD is moving towards Banana, and now DD's uh, made a successful push. Bentet's rotating back, and it looks like he might get back in time. That smoke will soon disappear on the arch position, looking for somebody towards the uh, graveyard. But it's HZ taken down towards the site. We've got flashbangs all over the place, but the frags are coming in for the T side. This could be it right now for Liquid. They only need this round. DD's coming in faster from Quadso. What can he do? What can he offer here for Tai Lu? It's just Mo to offer anything. He creates a one versus three for himself, but there's just too much to handle. And finally, Liquid will be able to make it happen, but it took two overtimes against Tai Lu. 22 to 19. That was some UFC level match of Counter-Strike. Quite the slobber knocker, and I, I really feel for Tai Lu because they had that round in overtime on their T side where they had a two versus one. It was awkward though, people were low health, they had to cross back into the site. Twist had the angle, and they just waited too long to do it. Were stuck inside the fountain with the bomb and lost by a timeout. That was brutal, and that, uh, I think, made it too much to ask going 0 3 in the first half and then facing three match points against Team Liquid. 22 for 19. I mean, uh, who, what do we think about the performances? I think from Tyloo's perspective, it's, it, was, it was excellent. I think you could really tell with Liquid, they didn't expect to be challenged so much. I, they, perhaps for them as well, they would have expected to do a lot better as they would go into this match thinking, we're the much better team. We are going to get that 3-0. Like, you know, we're going to get 3-0. We're just going to get you know, three wins straight away. Then we can go home early. What, whatever, you know, that's the kind of mindset they're going to go into this with. But Tyloo, one of the underdog teams, one of the unknowns, one of the, one of the teams which you wouldn't be expecting to see star started Counter-Strike from, they gave them a. They could. Ver they could have won that match easily, very easily. So, so yeah, that's. I think a bit disappointing for Liquid, even though they won. And but for Tai Lu, I mean, had they won this game, I, I think they. I think you would have seen that uh, logo in the, in the major James. Well, still more to play for. Over to Paul on the desk. Thanks very much. And uh, yes, game three in the books. We've played at least ninety rounds of Counter-Strike already, and we're only in game three of the day. Thank you for staying with us as well. Still got five more matches to go, but first off, let's break down game number three, which was a tricky match, Jason, for Team Liquid. After you, you no, thought no, 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 this no. should the, be this fine. This was exactly as they as they planned it out heading right. into this. They had every, everything went their way. Okay. That was exactly what they wanted. Had them right where they Extra wanted. Extra practice. Then. Yeah, exactly. Just yeah. get warmed up for the rest of the year, rest <laughs> of the event. L I mean, let's let's start. Twist was Twist was a beast. Yeah, um, he was monster. Yeah, on defensive side, he bailed him out of a, a bunch of different spots um, with his positioning towards pit. Um, and then, I mean, just to point out the other end of the spectrum as well, Nitro had a couple big impact rounds, but largely there were stretches of this match where he was just kind of absent. But I think the big takeaway from this match is. Um, yes, it, it was super close. If you're liquid, you're going to look at this and you're going to say, listen, we're, we're trying to qualify for the major. Who cares about the scores as long as we yeah. qualify, as long as we get those three wins? This doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Um, but, it, but if you're watching this game and, you, and you're thinking Tai Lu, uh, this is a team that, that we've always known has the skill. And now that you, you can see a little bit more, they're starting to set up some of the plays that they want. It's not just kind of run around and try and find the kills. You, you can see they actually have a thought process and a game plan to do yeah. what they're working with. Um, this is a team that can be dangerous moving forward. I thought Ben Ted had, had a, a great game. Mo had, you know, a critical mistake early on, but bounced back and did phenomenal. Um, this this I mean, was a really tough game. It, it, I accept what you're saying, but isn't it also fairly typical of what we've seen of Tyler over the last couple of years? We've seen some of that really high-level play. We've also seen some pretty serious mistakes in their play, too. Yeah, what's really mind-blowing is that you can see in a time span of like 30 seconds of them playing really synchronized, going to the bombsite together. On to then just fall apart one by one. The remaining two on a bomb side are just going to dismantle that attack. Mm. Uh, no one gave up the refract whatsoever. So that's like the mind boggling thing about this Tylo team. Is and that it's frustrating they for have... us as neutrals because we love yeah. watching them play because they're so exciting, but yeah. at the same time, they're, they're so maddening as well because you just kind of go, What are you doing now? I don't understand. This is a totally different team from the team that sat down five minutes ago. That's we have Aza here on the screen. I think that the big, the, one of the big differences that the towards that A bomb side, if you compare these two teams on the CT side, is that 
as Jason was mentioning, Twist was having a great game playing on the balcony and playing in the pit, not necessarily even getting like a massive amount of kills every time, but staying alive is a big part of it. Because that's always going to create a crossfire. There's a player on the bomb side, or he's just towards the, the small pit, going towards the bomb side, and that's always going to be that much harder for the T's to be attacking, taking over the bomb side. On the other side of the spectrum was AZ, who was getting caught up by flashes, taking down instantly, and that's pretty much the bomb side loss at that point in time. So the massive difference there between these two teams was uh, on that A bomb side. I think I think this the story of this game is going to be more about Tai Lu just just being that impressive because yeah in the past we've seen good things and we've seen some critical mistakes but you know when they were when they were showing some danger at Malmo of last year and and you know after that and around that time period a lot of it was because they played this style that was like so so different than anything we saw mm -hmm. in the pro scene very very passive defensive setup that was almost relinquishing so much map control so you think there's no chance it should work but teams just hadn't seen that kind of style in so long that it actually was effective now we're starting to see they've they've adjusted some of the current theory I mean I thought one thing they'd struggle with in the their CT side is making that call when they've lost a bomb site to just bail out and save the weapon. CT side Inferno, it's extremely important, and we're seeing a lot of teams just bail out in three on threes now, even if they don't have any kind of uh, avenue back into the retake. They started doing that, so mm. they're kind of, they're, it looks like in certain, apps, in certain <laughs> situations, they're caught up to some of the theory. There, were, there was some times, though, where it looked like they wanted to go. It was, yeah, yeah. It was really like did. Peacemaker somewhere behind them going, no, yeah, right. kept them, come back. They're like, remember what Peacemaker yeah. said yesterday. <laughs> it's almost like they had that mental check, <laughs> yeah, wasn't it? They're like, yeah. We normally would go in, wait, hold on, we're not supposed to do that anymore. Yeah, we'll come right. Back out. I mean, different situations. Like, for example, you, you see in like they have the three on three situation on the B bomb side, and then you see a guy just taking a wide peek going for a straight up duel. Luckily, he was hitting his shot, so he managed to capitalize. So, those are the kind of things that they're a little bit iffy, you know, taking risks that you're not necessarily supposed to. But on the other hand, you also saw them recollect, think of what they were doing in retakes, like doing boosts over smokes, you know, really thinking through the kind of things, not just rushing in the bomb side, but actually seeming like they had some. Uh, plan or rule of thumb, hmm. you know, what have you for certain situations and slow things down before actually yeah. committing to the retake. He's only had two days with him. It's not a huge amount. No, of there's what, not a what lot. What can he, he do to help them? I think the most of what he probably does is, I mean, the, I imagine they would have to shrink down the map pool a little bit to focus on. And I, and I think probably what, what he would focus on is like, for instance, on a map like Inferno, one thing is when I was watching this game that I thought Peacemaker might have had an impact on because I haven't seen him in so long is a routine to take banana control. It's like where you use your nades, where you double nade, where you put the smoke, the flashes you throw to pop flash mm -hmm. and make sure you get control of banana because we saw Tai Lu actually getting control of portions of the map before they went for that like typical, the, you know, what we kind of come to know from them is just that ball Balls out attack onto a bomb site where they just never stop going forward, and they would actually take map control before that. So I'm assuming if that, if I'm if I'm peacemaker, that's kind of what I'm doing is that early mm. game establish the map on the early portions of the game. I'm going to stop you there um, because we have Twist waiting in the player area right now. Uh, thank you for joining us, Twist. And uh, firstly, congrats, you've had an MVP game yourself. Obviously new to the team. How are things settling in for you? Uh, everything is going well. I'm very comfortable playing with this team, and they make me feel like I'm in a family. So. Mm. Nice. They, a lot of people said uh, they've, they've brought you in for the longer term. They, they're looking for the future and young star bringing you in. But you, you're already making an impact. It must be, feel really good. I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm just doing my role. <laughs> you just do what you're told. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. good to hear. I've got, uh, I've got a fellow uh, North American alongside us. He, he's obviously impressed with your play so far. What have you got to ask Twist? Yeah, nice game. Well, I guess uh, actually the only thing that comes to mind, this is a little bit of a silly question. Um, did you get your girlfriend a jersey? Yeah. No, I haven't <laughs> yet. I haven't gotten an extra one yet. So That's the hard-hitting questions. It'll happen soon. Nice. Uh, what, what's been the big, uh, the big adjustment coming into this team before? I mean, you were in, what, TSM and Misfits before this, so now that you're in a team that has a little bit more of like an established core of how they like to play, what's been the biggest adjustment for you from those two kinds of teams? The biggest adjustment would be just there's more freedom on this team. Like, everybody can do whatever they want, and nobody will, like, get yelled at by a teammate for doing something bad. So that's how it was on past teams. Uh, do you like that compared? Because you were under Sean, who, had a, who was known to have a little bit more of like a regimented structure of whatever like set plays that everyone is doing. And that are you enjoying this freedom a little bit more? I am, actually. But Sean did teach me like a lot of things before I went to this team. So it's nice. good. Good. Take it, all, take it all together, I guess, and, uh, <laughs> and make it all good. Um, let's talk about the performance against Tyler. You guys, you know, on paper, people will look at this and go, oh, Liquid, they've struggled there. But how was it for you in game? Uh, Tyler's actually really good. I was surprised, and I'm pretty sure all of us were surprised by like, their play style and how good they were. So. Yeah, a lot of people, uh, they find it hard to adjust to the Chinese teams when they, when they play them for the first time. Peacemaker made the point that they play a little bit differently. But did, did you find that at all? 
Yeah, actually. Like, I'm the holes player, and somebody kept just, like, running fast peeking me, like, deep holes with an op. I've never <laughs> seen that before ever, but I like it. It's, it's fun, fun to play against. Yeah. Uh, Nato, you got anything? No, I was, yeah, I was going to talk about that. You, you had a great game playing halls and playing yeah. on the, in that pit area and staying alive a lot of the time in situations where you're getting pressured. I mean, what, what was it like playing against Tyloo in that situation where, and for me at least, you're the, you're the guy that needs to be alive in that situation. Were they giving you enough pressure, in your opinion? Was it easy? I don't think they were pressuring me enough. It should have been harder for me to get the multi-kills that I did. They weren't clearing it properly when they were scaling up lane, so... What uh what what is it like being um I mean you're you're relatively inexperienced especially compared to the other guys what's it like competing to be a spot in the major and having a double overtime game I mean what are kind of like uh, are you thinking about that aspect of it at all as, as a player No it's actually crazy that I'm here qualifying for a major <laughs> right now but <laughs> I'm pretty sure the pressure will like be added on like at the other games say like if we're 2-0 or yeah are you going to be 2-0 I hope so <laughs> That's the confidence we there like to we see. There we go. It's like a that. fairly non-committal answer, isn't it? It's not <laughs> over the top. It's not cocky. It's not too. <laughs> it's the it's American dream. Uh, yeah, it's absolutely. It's good. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, we wish you well for the rest of your games. Congrats on the first game of the day, and uh, I'm sure that will give you a bit more confidence as you move through the competition over the next four days. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Twist. There we go. Then Team Liquid uh, winning eventually, and uh, Twist with an MVP performance as well there Jason I, you made the point he's, he's there for the long term he's there for the future but delivering already yeah I, I always describe Twist in like the NA scene he was I, I always call him in like sick as like the lost boys of the North American scene because they had that phenomenal run at one of the ECS finals um, where, where they were taking teams to the limit on cobblestone back when they were in TSM and like those two played phenomenal but after that TSM didn't qualify for like a single event for months so these two guys had this like breakout performance but then you just never saw them afterwards so um, it, is, it is good that he goes on to get Sean, he gets experience from Sean, and that's, um, and now is in this Team Liquid team that, that is playing well and has Zeus as a coach, a lot of experience there, and it's, that that's kind of what you need when you bring in the younger players, especially mm. in the North American scene, the leadership is so, like, there's barely any, so the fact that he gets to play for some time under Sean and learn from him, and now gets to go into Liquid and play under Zeus, and, you know, the experience that they have and the things they can teach him, this, this is like a perfect environment for this guy to break out and become, you know, the next star of North America. Yeah, uh, final words for Ty Lu. Uh, as they move on, obviously they've started 0-1. They probably expected they might do that. Can they still break out? Can they still make the major? I, yeah, I mean, definitely they can. I don't think there's any indication from this game that they sh wouldn't have the opportunity, the chance. Definitely they do. Uh, playing as tight as they did against Liquid. But I think one other thing that, that uh, they must go through and think about is a lot of the, the afterplan situations also. Because a lot the ones they, they won were more about an individual like Mo, for example, going massive, Bentet going big. Yeah. Uh, that kind of stuff. Instead needs to be cohesion between the players having the right angles and kind of um, joined... Uh, decision making in those kind of situations that need, they need to also be putting effort into because they put themselves in situations where yeah. they have the bomb down, they have the opportunity. But yeah, it's um, almost like that for the first 90 seconds of the round, they know exactly what they're doing. Yeah. But for the last 25, they have no idea. It's yeah, the it hard part to teach. Yeah, <laughs> <post -class> exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, it's about, a lot about intuition. But if they if they play like they did uh, against Liquid here, I think they're going to be a challenge for some of some of the other teams that are that mm -hmm. are trying to qualify. I'm not going to say they're going to qualify, but I mean, I think that made me a little bit more promised for what they're going to look like against you know some of the other weaker competition in the in the qualifier. Mm. Liquid, and on the other hand, obviously. Start off with a 1-0. Uh, yeah. They would have hoped to do that, obviously, looking at the, the way that they've uh, drawn that out. Of the three teams that you've gone through, who, who've impressed you so far the most? Um, that's actually a really good question. I'm actually, I'm always, I don't know if it's because I'm going to say Immortals here, even at a loss, but just because I'm always kind of, I've never really been high on them since they lost, um, or, or since FNX joined the team, since they lost Phelps to SK. Mm. I've never really been like that. I've never felt that excited about them. And so every time I see them kind of play well with KNG coming in, that's always... I always just feel a little bit better about Immortals, as yeah. crazy as that sounds. Okay. Even nice in the loss. Yeah, I mean, th not much to go by yet, really. Uh, again, I'm going to wait to finish flag and say Penta a little bit because they were in a, in <laughs> yeah, a that's good they were in a you know pretty rough situation. I, I mean, love you the could, fact you that you've just latched on to this team now because they've got two Finnish players oh. and a Finnish coach. So you're claiming Finland. I get the on bias. That? I get the bias. Yeah, I mean, I get that. He did play with Sonny. No, he did. Yeah. 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 And yeah. Nasu as and well. Nasu as well. Yeah. Nasu, yeah. Yeah. So there we go. But yeah, I mean, they even though their body language wasn't exactly showing excitement in the situation where they were broken in money, they were down in the later stages of the match, still managing to capitalize. I um, once saw Sonny right smile, by the way. Yeah, you did? I did. I saw him smile once. Oh, the sunny guy. <laughs> yeah. He was doing the minor. And he won a clutch. And I saw him smile.
<laughs> For a fin, that's quite something, eh? It's incredible. Yeah. I was blown away. <laughs> oh, Fair this enough. Hard-hitting segment. <laughs> so where are we going with this next? To yeah. a break. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we'll do is we'll, we'll finish at the desk right now. We'll end up on that high note uh, as we send it off to a break. Of course, we've still got more matches uh, to come. Next up is a very interesting match. I'm looking forward to this one. Both teams have played at the Major in various forms in the past, of course. God sent looking for their second time in a row at the Major and Dignitas as an organisation looking for their sixth major. They go head-to-head -head after the break. Coming up next, Godsend versus 